for the benefit of our whanau who are on our live stream, I'm going to open up our, formally open our council meeting with Kaukia, and then uh, following that, we pass over to Councillor Kappa. Um, enough of me. We ask that through council's discussions and decisions, the representatives we have elected may govern the Far North District with imagination, skill, and wisdom to achieve a fairer and more united community that enhances the well-being of our district and solves the district's problems efficiently and effectively. Um, 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 ハイレマイのジョマイナティマテヒママイナティマテヒママイナティマテヒママイナティマテヒママイナティマテヒママイナティマテヒママイナティマテヒママイナティマテヒママイナティマテヒママイナティマテヒママ
Rira e tātumā o tai ki tēnei wāhanga no hoiau e me mihi atu. E mihi tonu nei nga po tātumi tēnei e nga kutu te nga tātumi tātua. Mā tere anga mā tere Kūre a nei 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 Kūre a nei
полную для многих экранов. For the benefit of our Sano on our live stream today, it's a monumentous day indeed for the finals district count. Because today is the day that we side a memorandum of understanding which will see us both participate in the Aotearoa Reo Lua program to the Department of Internal Affairs, which will see Tikiri Kiri, our largest town, become the first official bilingual town for the final district. Our uh, chief executive Janice Smith and myself will um, come around to the site, um, and along with Fire and Matokipa, we will sign the memorandum of understanding between our two organisations. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
For five years, I hounded Jesse to get us here to this day, Jesse. Prior to leaving the Department of Internal Affairs, of course, the final act, 
The final act was to get this across the line in the Department of Internal Affairs. So we've got a tripartite arrangement today that not only includes the Kaunihara, but includes, of course, the Department of Internal Affairs. And I know she doesn't work there anymore, but you've got people still there that probably helped her get this across the line for them, for us to be here celebrating today. So, and Moko, I think that this will take courage. And this will take courage. This is easy. This is the easy thing. And those of you that know Nati here and know our relationship that we have with our community, it's one that tries to strengthen every single person within our community. And I do that, of course, and I'm remiss I didn't do it today, by uh, reciting our pepeha. So it's not too late, I'm going to do it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think what time? Yeah. Pepe me anda. Ko tēnei kōrero, tēnei pepeha e kōrero hia nei te rā nei, ka ki te koutou e aha te kaho nga ki rehia, mō a rātou mahi katoa kei te mahi, i a rātou. Me tēnei kaupapa hoki. Ko toke rau te tūtei ki te hauraro o te pūwaha ko rākau mana mana ki te rāpiti. E re re atu nei te kareimanga nui te awa o ngā rangatira e tūmai rā te pā o kororipo. Ti tiro whadararo ki ōrongo, ki tātau awa, te wahi mata ara ara tia ai e puhi, te waka tūpuna mā tātua e moi mai rā, e moi mai rā, e moi mai rā. Ki ti whakate uru ki te ngā here here nui o Puketi, po hutunua ki te moana o o mātere. A keo peo te rangi ki runga whakataha mauna, kei raro ko te awa o Waitangi. Hi re re ki pō kā kā tō tika te whatumana waki i pīkiri ki Waitangi. Ko whiti ora, hiru hārama hōu, te tiu mārama, tauwharanga marae. Ngā tiri hia te hapū, ngā puri nui tore tēmu. Some of you should be reciting this as I speak, of course, every time I see this. <laughs> this is how I start. So I'm looking forward to that day when the council table will be following along, not just the places that they recognise, like Rākau Manga Manu, O Mātere, O Pugeti, but reciting with us that pepeha that defines us. That pepeha that defines us. And so why we proudly stand and give that pepeha is because it comes with responsibilities and duties, just as you do, just as you have. And those responsibilities are for every single person, every single person, not only my mokopunas, although they might be in the front of the line, but every single person that lives in our tribal boundaries and is privileged to live within our boundaries, that we have a duty of care, regardless whether that's health, education, housing, social services. Sounds like we've got a big team behind me, but there's, I think there's me, Nora, and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what our duty is to all those within our tribal boundary. This is going to help us do that. This is going to help us within our, with us striving to get our community to be part of our community. It starts here. It starts here. Well, five years ago when I counted just then. And so I acknowledge the council for their strength, their courage, because it will take courage for us to be able to use this tool, to use our will, to use our culture, to better bring us together, to better bring us together. And so it's probably not a bilingual program, it's more of a bicultural program, a bicultural program. And I argue, you're not here today, of course, those that started off in the Rotorua, that was far too easy, of course. <laughs> 
is not argue that Kitty Kitty should have always been the first bilingual town. Even just recently, when we found a slate tablet, just recently, that had the writings of our Tupuna. So we were being taught English, we were being taught writing in Kitty Kitty. In the mission house that sits there to the same alongside Te Awa Naranatea. So I would argue that we should have been the first town in Aotearoa. And so when we embark, when we embark on this journey, and it is a journey, it's been a lifetime journey for my hapu, of course. It strengthens our language as we do this. It strengthens both our languages as we do this. And when we embark on this journey, of course, it's with that in mind that at the turn of the 18th century, we were living together in Kenya. Our high chief's children were being taught by the missionaries a language, first our language in writing, and then learnt the English language, albeit under the guise of Christianity, the first Bible was written in our language. So I'd argue that this is a long time coming that we do this today. And our community celebrates it. Our hapu will lead that celebration alongside the council and alongside the Department of Internal Affairs, of course. So moko, if I mean it to you, Make a mihao chakwe, e mihao mau ki te katoa te te punai. E te katoa te te punai. E lanu te lapai. Lanu te lapai. E mau, mau nga rima, e miri miri hea. E rongi rongi hea. E pai ati tate ki kone. Wasn't sure if I didn't have my glasses on. There was two copies. There was two copies. There was uh, an agreement that we translated the Māori. There was an agreement that we translated the Māori. It was a complete document. Tēnā pēhe, te tēhe sāmo tēhe, i rōpē i a kauta. We don't do this. For accolades, we don't do this. Kavana tira mia for Matane too. We do this as one of those duties that is part of our hapu, as part of Bates hapu, as part of all the other hapu that we pay the way hope for me. The part of what I hear today, but then I go for the family up to the family up to come to. Reuelle <laughs> Ara ki ngā tēpū, ngā tūru, e ako nei i tō tātou reo. Ara i runga i tēnā hoino koutou e māta ki tēnā i ako e hira. Te māhoi, ko tāu kamohi me kamohi nui ki runga i te e paua kāna tā. O mera kore kore tā, ka puta a te tēnei kaupo ko i rotu i ako. Mahari mai kia koe ki tō taha. Ki te mau tēnei kaupapa ki roto i ākoe ki tuahi. O rena mihi kawana ki ākoe. Tātou katoa hoki. Huri ana, te nā koutou. Te nā koutou. Tā te nā koutou katoa. Te pā, te pā. Te pā, te pā, te pā, te pā, te pā. Tu 
The vision of this memorandum of understanding is for Kiri Kiri to become a bilingual centre and to create more spaces, places and opportunities where Te Reo Māori is seen, heard and celebrated alongside the English language and to develop a real a strategy and implementation plan for Ngāti Rehia, which I'm guessing is going to include Te Kura Kaka Māori or Te Kiri Kiri as a part. To achieve Te Reo Māori status for Te Kiri This is a really beautiful day for us, and as you said, Matua Kipa, if we can make our largest town, Kiri Kiri, a bilingual centre, then we can do that across the entire time. We know already that Crown agencies have an obligation under the um, Māori Language Act to do this, to um, play into Te Mahi Kona, to revitalise and reinvigorate our language within the work that we do. Um, but what we also know is that it's going to need community buy and it's going to need our whānau who live in Kiri Kiri to play part of this experience, need our businesses, our non governmental organisations, our area our hapu, our Bay of Islands, Tongan community. <laughs> and I'm very excited to say that that Wyan has already started. Yesterday, we did a tour and visit of Merlin Lance, one of our new companies that have started at our Bay of Islands Airport. Um, and they heard about the signing of this memorandum on understanding. The chief executive of that company said, I want to be the first business that attains that bilingual status for Kitty Kitty so that he's got those Skyping rights. So I'll leave that in the But that's what this is going to play into the. The beauty of this as the beginning point for the student for us as council for Nazi media as well is that we are going to have more businesses who want to buy into this. We are going to have schools who want to be a part of this. We are going to be able to see the realization of a Kunakoka Pamoli for our largest town through this. It is a monumentous day, and I am so grateful for being able to share this space with you today to sign this memorandum of understanding, and I look forward to seeing where it takes us all. So with that, Bano, we are going to uh, pause our live stream and break for a final one. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Just going to close it away.
unique and what a beautiful ceremony and occasion it was. We have got an incredibly massive agenda to get through, so definitely be putting me through my today. Um, if I could get a countdown to resume our live stream, please, will you get that into our meeting proper? For this morning's meeting, uh, just a few more announcements. Our copies of our agenda and the attachments are available on our London District Council website. And a reminder to those who are online and who are kind of in the room that this meeting has been recorded and live streamed on our final District Council YouTube page. We also uh, are having some technical difficulties with our room camera and mics. So we have got the uh, uh, the unit there that is live streaming, but the microphone is over there. So if we can please just speak up and just a reminder to those who are in the public gallery today, you are closest to the microphone. So I'm unsure if you whisper about us, but it will be picked up by the people online there. So just a warning there. Uh, if, for those of us who are joining the meeting online with our teams, if you are not speaking, please keep your microphone on mute and camera off. And if you are going to speak, please turn the microphone and the camera on. If possible, use a headset so that you are heard and can hear clearly. Uh, I just want to um, offer a, a mihi and a welcome to our Kaiti Deo, our interpreter for today, who is Eli Smith, known by Haere Mai Nui Kwa. My name is Yamada Nekaini Gera. I'm Stephen, and our Neil Maoni speaking, and it could be able to put me through your pace. Today, Eli, kia kaha. Uh, in the Maramataka Maori today is Māwharu, so we're getting into our high energy phase, but anyways, we have the full moon. Um, so hopefully that high energy flows all the way through to the end of our massive agenda today. We have a large printed agenda, but five attachments were removed prior to printing, um, just to keep the slides down, and they're available for public viewing on the final district council network. And the briefings, elected members also occasionally receive briefing papers, which may also be published in the same space. So those pertain to item 6.3, Point 10, point 11, and point 12. Yeah. So we have an item of business not on the agenda, which cannot be delayed, which is supplementary public exclusion item 8.7, interim chief executive officer appointment. Uh, just by way of quick announcements and some background of our dating database information, um, it's a three yearly process to update our rateable valuation of properties. And the council had issued an apology for miscalculations that went live on your website and have been rectified. Um, that may impact your rate changes for the 2024 financial year due to the timing around QV um, releasing the updated valuations. We, we have to, by legislation, send our rates out and also the process for you to object to your value. Um, should your objection go through, and that mean that your the value of your property is less, but we've rated for it at a higher value, the council will rectify that within your rates and vice versa. Uh, and with that, we will. Um, I haven't had any apologies for this meeting, but we just know we do have Councillor Halkia Hanawea who is joining us virtually today. Otherwise, it's a full house, and welcome to our lovely community board chairs here as well, as well as councillors. We'll jump into deputations. Our first deputation today is from Linda K representing Kohu Kohu residents for Kohu Kohu Street Lights. And I can see we've got Linda online there. Linda, we're happy to pass the floor over to you and you have five minutes for your deputation. Should there be any time left over, then there could be questions from the floor here. We'll pass over to you, Linda. Kia ora. Kia ora and tēnā koe and tēnā koutou. Katoa. Um, as, as the Mayor has explained, my name is Linda Kay and I'm from Kohu Kohu. I hope you can hear me. I know there's a little bit of difficulty with sound. I'm getting a lot of feedback from I you. So um, the reason that we have asked for a deputation is that we have a community plan. Actually, we have 
two over that we've put together over several years, and they've been adopted by council, so they're operative. And the plan refers to heritage, uh, the fact that we're a heritage precinct, and also that we uh, aspire eventually to a dark sky. And it refers also to obviously the protection of our natural environment and our community and appropriate infrastructure. We have asked for lights, street lighting that illuminates just the ground and not the sky. And on the 24th of January this year, uh, contractors came and installed new lights on the corner of Manning Street and Mariner, but they installed the same bright blue, um, we think they're 5,000 Kelvin units lights as were there before. And so we're not quite sure how we get our plan implemented in that case. And we are asking essentially for a directive that there be a removal of uh, of the bright blue 5000 Kelvin light bulbs uh, from our street lights in, in the Kohu Kohu Heritage Precinct and indeed in the surrounds and that those lights be replaced with monochromatic amber lights of less than 3000, possibly less even than 2700 Kelvin units, uh, angled to illuminate the paths rather than the sky. And the reason that we've come to a full council is that the presence of this request for a safe dark sky in our, um, or the implementation of our plan doesn't seem to have reached whoever has been contracted to install the lights. And so we thought maybe if we can get an actual resolution from council that our plan be implemented seeing it's there and it's been there now, I think for at least a decade, because we've done two plans and they both said the same thing, uh, that we would like a, an actual directive and we would like it to happen, please, for the benefit of our community and our, our and the fishes in it and the birds and the trees. And you have adopted this as a benefit. So we'd like actually now for it to be implemented. Um, and the only other thing I would say is that we we would like some consideration of the implementation of uh, environmentally friendly lighting all around the harbour because when we're in Kohu Kohu, of course, we look over to Ivan, Ivydale and Horeki, and it's not going to be ideal if we get monochromatic amber lights and there are still bright blue lights over there, especially as there's more development going on there now. So that's all I have to say. I hope I haven't taken too much of your time and we would just be grateful for your attention to this, please. Thank you very much for your deputation. That was very well articulated. And I sat on the Kaifu County Community Board when we um, noted through that meeting the new Kuhu Kuhu Township Plan, which was the first bilingual township plan to come to this county, which was quite exciting. So I very much appreciate you coming to speak to us on this today. Now, while I can't speak to the environmental lighting that is requested for Oreke and Ivy Dale and what those communities want, we definitely can look to what we can do with the council for people in this space. We have time for a question from the floor if there are any.
Uh, through the chair, um, our team has been working on the request specifically for those two intersections and how we can achieve what is being requested. Um, um, we've got the latest stuff there, um, but, but it's definitely something we're um, trying to look towards achieving as well. But the direct community, and it um, yeah, is actually the wider implication of something that we need to work with. Um, Thank you. We've just heard from our staff member, Calvin, from the Northland Transportation Alliance there, and then I'm not sure if you did hear him, but we are due a, an update in this space and we'll make sure that we keep you directly and um, updated in how this progresses for us as a council. But otherwise, thank you very much for your deputation and you can um, let the residents and the community out of public court know that we have heard you loud and clear from here in council. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And I'd just like to make it to all of you and to all the other residents of Kohu Kohu, because this was a collective effort, even though I'm the one person appearing. Thank you very much. Linda. You have a wonderful day today. Thank you. Our second deputation today is from the Honourable Murray McAleenie, who was representing the Te Taitukero Water Trust. Of course, we've just recently celebrated the opening of the Tawhi <coughs> Reservoir as part of the Mid North um, Water Reservoir Scheme, which was an absolutely awesome occasion to attend and see happen. Murray, you have five minutes for your deputation today, and you are speaking to item, Agenda Item 6.12, Dedicated Water Sources Options Review. Happy to pass the time over to you and offer again welcome to our contestants. Thank you, uh, Mayor Bumper and uh, councillors. Good morning to you. And can I just say at the outset, um, I very much appreciate both the opportunity to uh, appear before you today and the consideration of offices given uh, to our work. I'm not quite sure how to work this presentation. Someone can I just can move it forward? Like so? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so the, there were two, two matters, um, Mayor uh, Wilgram, that I wanted to address uh, today. Um, really uh, to reinforce the report of your officers. I want to clarify first the focus of the Ojibwe, proposed Ojibwe Reservoir, which in the officials' uh, report, uh, is approached to some extent on the position of future proofing the territory water supply. Uh, that is, in terms of the wider goal of the scheme, a subsidiary element to it. The primary goal of the Ojibwe Reservoir would be to unlock the economic potential of the rest of this district in the same way as we've seen water unlock the potential mm. of the East over many years. Um, we're pleased that officers, while they haven't been able to compare. Uh, the uh, cost of the Otaburi Reservoir with in terms of the sources of supply security, we are pleased to see that they assess that it would meet uh, the uh, town's future needs. But I just remind you that the real purpose is to achieve in the West what has been achieved in the East over the past decades. And uh, the report of officers makes those impacts very clear, $100 million of economic impact from the construction of the reservoir alone, and fully developed $600 million of investment in horticulture, 500 indirect and 500 direct jobs, and about $600 million a year of economic activity. So those things won't happen overnight, but they'll happen over time, and it's a good reason uh, to invest in this project. Uh, the officers also have Draw your attention to the report prepared in 2015 by MPI and NAPUI, uh, which reminds you that it's 5,000 hectares of freehold Maori land uh, within the scope of the scheme. And if you look at the map, uh, the, the green area is the best soils for horticulture, and it was designed uh, over time to reach those areas, which include a substantial amount of freehold Maori land. That 2015 report identified water as the, as the critical enabler to unlock that freehold and land. 
Um, and it also estimated some local working numbers in terms of potential communities for those Ngāpui landowners. Um, the second thing I wanted to draw your attention to is the funding. There have been some developments since the officer's report was put together. This is a $44.5 million project, $7.5 million of that is contingency. Uh, the last item you can see on that list, a $7.5 million contribution towards contingency by end has been added to the list quite late in the piece. They gave us some last minute encouragement, shall we say, to try and get this project up by saying, um, we'll find the contingency if you can find the funds to build the reservoir. You'll see that uh, it does add up to $44.5 million. The, the piece that is missing at the moment is, is the $7.5 million that we've got identified alongside uh, the Far North District Council. And uh, if you approve a contribution today, we would have the work start this summer. Uh, every, everyone else has made their principal commitments. Uh, finally, I just addressing the report from officers saying to you, uh, they've given you the few options of future study or making a commitment. I think they have recommended doing further study. I just want to be clear that our options um, uh, are, are limited. We have run out of runway with both landowners and with in terms of extending this with Cap the can down the road, I think four times now, uh, and, uh, and, and building the issues, of course, as well, require us to make a decision. I, my final pitch to you, uh, Council, is it's not very often that the central government and the regional authority put $30 million on the table for, to bring about something really good in this district. I would hope to see it go away. Um, we've done our best to keep it all together. Uh, and so uh, I'd say to you, anything that we build in the next year is going to be cheaper than something at two or three years' time and much cheaper than anything in five years' time. I think this is, uh, this is the time for us to find the Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Murray, for taking the time to share that with us. We have time for probably a single question if there is one. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and we'll be considering that paper later on in today's meeting. <clears throat> that brings us to our items today. Can I please just give our uh, elected members um, a little bit of a heads up that because we have such a large agenda, I won't be ensure that we are following standing orders under this meeting. So please keep to the base to see. Um, so that we can get through it in a timely fashion as best we can. I do also understand though, that there are a number of items on our agenda today, which are uh, obviously you will have questions on that you will want to uh, basically debate uh, towards and against this uh, how our resolution should come out in that space. So I totally respect that, but please do and get your debate as succinct as possible. We move to item 5.1, which is the confirmation of previous minutes on page 6. The recommendation is that council confirms the minutes of the council meeting held virtually by Microsoft Teams on the 4th of May 2023 is a truly correct record. And if you leave that item, you will receive it. Thank you, Councillor Lachina. Councillor Lachina, do you have anything you'd like to speak to in the minutes? Any other members? We'll put that to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Those opposed? All abstentions and the motion is carried. We will now move to item 7.2, our community board member, community board minutes from our main meetings 2023, which can be found on page 576 of our agenda. And the recommendation is to the most of the following community board minutes for the 9th of May, it's entry period, 10th of May, 5th of the younger, and the 11th of May, our Bay of Islands, on the Royal Community Board. I'm happy to move that item. Can I have a second, please? Thank you uh, We will pass over to our lovely community board chief for the rest of the presence today and we'll go to our um, Tahiku community board chair, Gardner, in the first instance, if you'd like to add anything to the minutes that will be here. I'm just finding the page. You and me both, that is on page 576. <laughs> Thank you.
And thank you to all the other staff who are supporting our actual meetings on the day. So during the meeting, um, we granted funds towards the five thousand dollars community Alumni School Union for one hundred and fifty years reunion, which is just a massive um, milestone for that new community. And that's well. $4,000 to the uh, Tucker Thompson for youth to um, travel from the beautiful uh, Tucker Thompson. And $2,586 to the Living Theatre Trust to run the low show in the TRB. So the, uh, there was also a deputation from the uh, Northern Basketball informing the board of its project for the output of Basketball. Basketball courts and housing sports in the old warehouse building in the market square quite higher. So that was a plus to get to hear about the new basketball and what we're doing in that space. So it's an interesting online. Yes, Jane. Yeah, so I was wondering if there's any discussion about the new basketball. Uh, what was resolved from that discussion? Well, there was no, it was just a deputation to our board just informing us of how the output was going to be laid out in the oh, okay. What I'd like to do um, for our community board chairs is just afford you all a moment to speak to your respective minutes and then we'll open up the floor to any questions from elected members on board. It's the end of this paper. So there's just one last thing. Uh, as you, some of you might well know that I am a member of the Tohoku Revitalisation Group. So we've come to our last milestone in the um, plan, which is the Kaikai Town Square, and we've run out of the money. So we have enough time, as far as I'm aware, to do a few states that we don't have enough money to complete it. So I'm looking for this council today to um, the 400,000k, which will hopefully complete the town square, and this 400,000k will go to the wall rate. So it won't be a um, a rate rise. Thank you for that, um, Chief Governor. And I imagine that you have a councillor who will be looking to do that as part of our any bank operations where you'll get the opportunity to speak to it there. Thank we'll you. move to our uh, Kaikou County Board. Uh, still the Kaikou County Board. Just one thing that I'll uh, mention is from our last meeting was we had um, in public forum, we had Linda Bracken from the Kaikou Business and Community. Um, talking to us about the Bike for Life, Bike for Life Working Group, um, looking at following from a community meeting that we, we held, um, we've organised a group that is looking at ways that you can provide opportunities for our little whorehas that are on bikes and our bigger whorehas that are on cars and motorbikes. Um, and I understand that that's um, something that's happening across all our communities, so we're looking at ways of involving youth and not so useful people um, into supporting some positive outcomes for our community. Um, we have a deputation at our next meeting by the chairperson of that group, Jay Heppy. Um, the other thing that I'll just bring to your attention is the deputation that we had at that meeting by Justin Blakey, representing the Piper District Sportsville, um, and he talked to us about the um, Kaipuri Pukianga Community Board advocating for an indoor pool to be um, added to that sportsville complex and wanting some um, commitment to that. Last week or this week, um, Justin and the Sportsville Group have sent out a um, community survey around what 
um, people think about that idea of full and what the facility might be used for. So um, he'll have some data around that shortly. So those are the other two things. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. We'll go to the community board chair. Thank you, then. Look, I, I take it as read. The only comment I would like to make is that in relation, this is the council um, in relation to the leases that are coming up for you on the other series for notifying affected parties. However, I would like a motion, please, that when affected parties are notified the leases that are coming up, that the um, community board be at the chair of the appropriate subdivision meetings. So, um, the board, uh, uh, I had cold cooling going on um, and didn't know that the lease was coming up for renewal. Um, <clears throat> I did put it into note for something to discuss it. That's my combined meetings workshops. I believe there are a large number of leases due to renewal on the across the district. And I think that would be really good to get um, a heads up as to what's coming up and what's going to be controversial in our communities. And useful that, that it is um, very much noted, and I know that uh, agenda for the combined community boards workshop is currently underway. So, we could, um, please tune in to get a smart edit to it. Um, I'm happy to open the floor to uh, any questions or comments in the space from elected members. Looks like Council here. Taking it all as uh, all being well received. Um, I'll move that we uh, pass this recommendation. All those in favour, please say aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Most of the security. Thank you very much. We now move to item 6.1, our annual plan for the relation to the government from page 16. Let's get everyone at the moment to find that. Uh, what I am looking for is to take this line by line. Do you have an alternative information to the entire recommendation or something specific? On this it's in its entirety. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go past that. What I'll move that the rate right income remain at the same level as last year, i.e., there'll be no rate right rise for 23 24. That the senior reviews all available cost cutting measures, cross operational expenditure to address any operational shortfalls. Secondly, the voting budgets, budgets be urgently updated to cover CAPEX and OPEX, including necessary information relating to contractual roading obligations, including the obligations to the government budget relating to roading, to ensure Council's financial share is covered. And the third one is related to pensioner housing, that no maintenance or improvements are made while council progress option that was agreed to in the recent workshop, it was either it's referred to as B or 2, and that divestment or tender process be completed on or before the 1st of December 2023. We're going to have... Passed on so we can type it up. Do we have a second of the proposed? Resolution of Councillor Ranovich. I've been seconded by Councillor Ranovich, and then by Councillor McNally. Councillor McNally, I will um, pass over to you to speak to this while we uh, finally get to type it. Yeah, the reason I put that forward is there's been significant changes to uh, <laughs> just last week related to the roading. Um, and in particular around maintenance, we're very concerned that our share of that maintenance component may not be sufficient in the main plan. From my point of view, there is insufficient information related to a large chance of this budget and examples. Um, there's 13 and 14 on the table on page 17 refer to reactive health and safety measures for water and wastewater matching to 600,000. District drainage resource consents, half a million. There's, there's a, just a whole lot of, but what do they relate to? And I don't think we've had that information. If we look at the pension and housing, from maybe it's about 4.8 million maintenance for the experience current year. Um, and we're looking at an investment. Anyway. So I just don't think we should progress that. Uh, what was the other things I was looking at? There was, there was one for them, the young, um, Minutes. 
of B under that table. The additional 50k operation of budget required for professional fees to progress the stormwater resource consents. What's the TFT have So that's in addition to the half a million. Um, and then capital pro the capital program 2324 projects totaling 19.7 million that will be rescheduled from 22 to 23. And it reminded me of the March agenda where we, we approved the annual plan uh, and the annual report. And in that showed the budget for 2022 was 140.5 million and the actual spend was 61.8, 70, 75 million unspent. Is that enough? I get the right to reply. You do get the right to reply. Thank you, thank you. Councillor McNally, Councillor Adams, you seeked them. Would you like to speak to the proposal? Sure, I sure. Just to support what um, Councillor just said, I spent the whole day on the weekend. Oh, you will. But um, I just want to ask you, Jens, what's our current debt at this moment? You know? Because that, that has a big bearing on this. About 18 million, I think. Much? About 18 million, off the top of my head. What I'm going to do is just pause our meeting for a five minute break. Just uh, that is quite a significant uh, alternate resolution there, and I want to give our staff time to type that up and let the members time to actually um, have a proper read over what that is and the implications of it. So if we can please pause our meeting for five minutes. Thank you, Joshna. And we will reconvene at quarter to 12. Joshna, can you just confirm that our live stream is closed? Thank you.
Thank you. Ben. We get a significant alternate resolution to that within our agenda uh, for item 6.1 and campaign deliberations. And I'll just ask our staff to bring that up on screen so that all of the members can uh, read it, which has been uh, moved by Councillor McNally and seconded by Councillor Radich. The amendment is that rates income remain at the same level as last year, i.e. there will be no rates rise for the 2022-24 financial year and that the CE reviews all available cost-cutting measures available across the topics to address any complex shortfalls. B, if road projects be urgently updated to cover capex and offsets, including necessary info relating to contractual road obligations, including the old deliberation to government budgets relating to voting to ensure council's financial shares covered. We see that pension housing for pension housing and no maintenance or improvements are made while council progress options and reading recent workshops and that divestment tender process be completed before the first of December 2023. <coughs> Thank you. Um so um going to speak against this, not because I don't want rates to go, um, you know, stay the same, but because there was an opportunity for elected members to cut operational costs in our annual plan workshop. We were given a whole list of things and nobody could take anything off. And we, we had a workshop that worked really well. And it came back to us again in another annual plan workshop. We then workshopped um, the capital expenditure, and we, we did take the line items out. There are some in here today that I would um, ask that we go through line by line that I think we can take out today. Well, I'm going to try anyway. But if we want to provide services to our residents and rate plans, we need to ask them what needs to be cut. We can't do what we've been doing very, you know, but in, in regard to um, some aspects, not very well already. Like if you ask people how we're doing roads, unfortunately, it won't be very good. But if we if we do not do the increase to meet inflation this year, at the very least, and some of our wastewater renewal money that we need, and the 500k that we need for the consent work to take place for the drainage districts that, you know, are getting called about at least once a month, um, we're going to get an abatement notice and it's going to cost us even more money. We're going to get an abatement notice on our wastewater treatment plants if we do not continue on with the renewal works that staff have got programmed to continue on with. The money that's in the LTP is what we are, um, we consulted on and we committed um, we committed to spend, plus we consulted on these items in our annual plan that we should be adopting today. I understand that we need a paper on roading, but that needs to come outside of this, and we're going to have to um, just increase, you know, how much our share is that we put into the annual plan. The long-term plan conversation needs to start, like 1st of July, we need to start the long-term plan we need to have some tough conversations amongst our <coughs> in our communities. What we don't want to do anymore. What they don't want us to put their rates money into. Now is not the time. Feel that. Thank you. That's my call. Thank you, Mia Marco. I'm also going to speak against the amendment. The elected members that have had months and months of new shops. We will have forensically examined every single line in the capital group spreadsheets and operational group spreadsheets. The opportunity to remove items in our colleague has mentioned has been in those workshops. During those workshops, as we have for every single one of the nine terms and I sat at the council, the elected members have asked the staff to be we went over capex and opex costs and to reduce cost escalation where they can. And I believe our staff have forensically examined each one of those lines where they can. They have in the budgets right back to the minimum. 
If you tear the budget back too far, what happens is we receive reports, as we do, as we follow the yellow pages today, seeking additional funding to the cost group. So it's just really a way of budgeting the books because ultimately the costs are the costs. In regard to that item up there, what would our staff take home with them tonight that resolution would go through? <laughs> Who is going to make the decision about what projects get cut because rates are held at the current level? That's an untenable situation for our staff to be in. We couldn't agree, and I don't think by removing those budgets would be able to agree moving forward. Budgets. Spoken to my colleagues about this before. We pitch for our share of the National Land Transport Fund through the National Land Transport Plan every three to four years, depending on whether a variation is required. What the project team sets our application against nationally available funds. Last time we applied for 108 million, we said to get 108 million because the Rocket Kotahi did not have the money to support our business. If we are to ask the rate payers to make up the shortfall, that will mean a rate for us. Please don't anyone be deceived into believing that the government is only magic up the money to make up the shortfall. They have not got us. Wapa Kotaki is legally required to operate a balanced budget, money in, money out. The conversations are certainly happening, and I have to applaud. Uh, Lindsay Copper River is leading the charge in this space through the Merrill Forum into making sure that Auckland is front and centre and every political conversation is happening in London. But arbitrarily increasing our budget with the expectation that the government will leave us at 69%, but it's not supported in the law. We saw photos at the last workshop of some of the kitchens and bathrooms and some of our future housing stock. Nobody should be expected to live like that. We need to be good landlords. We have legal obligations as well as moral obligations to be good landlords. I do understand that there is a conversation put to divest some of the housing, but that should not stop us investing in that housing to make life acceptable for the tenants that live there at the moment. This is a resolution that's intended to replace the entire recommendation of the agenda. So I ask my colleagues, if you support that, what is going to happen to the policy of the majority while we free on land? What is going to happen to the policy of the council rate commission policy? Fees and charges for terms and all of those other lands that are in the of the land. I do, like my colleagues, wish to see rates with nice. I do understand the severe financial hardship that our rate pays are facing at this particular point in time. However, these kind of knee-jerk reactions, which are politically appeared on the day of the council meeting, are not based in any reasonable and sensible, logical, considered argument, and would assist all the violation and our reputation that considerable work at the WLA Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McCoy. Can I, I, I'll, I will be speaking in this motion as well. While I get into what it is trying to address um, for each of those items, a vote against this is not a vote against the principles that it is conveying within it, but it is a vote against it for a number of reasons. When we first sat around this table in our original, in our first lot of workshopping around what the EU plan would look like, we were looking at a rates increase of around 13%. Our current numbers, if we were to look at the original recommendation that you were voting on today, we've managed to bring that all the way down to 6.78%. That is a phenomenal um, decrease, and that it's actually below the CPI, which stands for the Consumer Price Index. We know that the cost of things go up year to year, and it is not responsible of us to also reflect that cost in the way we do things. Um, what I have real fears within this amendment, while for aid, I absolutely agree um, with the fact that we don't want rates rises, but in order to achieve that, I have no idea how our staff are going to be able to cut the budget lines across on the hard work that we are steering them towards, making sure they do for our district to achieve that. 
I have these over um, the fact that we've just gone through a realignment and seen staff restriction in that space that this could lead to further work that could need to be done and potential job losses for people in this organization who keep out of the group. I have um, no doubt that I, I, I have uh, absolute sympathies towards the fact that we have been in the dark for far too long in terms of writing and we are working on that actively addressing that in this space for the workshop plan for the 20th of June for all of council and on the 21st of June for our community boards to look at the uh, uh, levels of service and deliverability that we're getting from the transportation lines and solutions in this space for our council. One of those proposed solutions is to establish a writing committee for our council so that we can ensure that we do the necessary information at hand to make better decisions to ensure that our voting networks are put for purpose for our district. I know that there are budgets that have come through from central government in the wake of all of the significant weather events that happened to the tune of around five hundred million dollars. Um, and I do want I do not think that we need this resolution to be able to ensure we get our um, slice of the pie in that space, but I will be looking over at our Northern Transportation Alliance with the Jeff Calvin to make sure that that is prioritised and we are kept in the loop every step of the way. Please, Calvin. In terms of seeing, I just echo and share the sentiments of Councillor Court around that space that while um, I am sympathetic again to the fact that we do not want to be spending money that is, could potentially be a waste in the long term. It will definitely not be a waste in the short term in terms of the state of our housing for the hourly portfolio for some of our residents who are living in here and appalling conditions here in here. So for those reasons, um, as well as a real fear that uh, this uh, potential motion like this, while um, the principles of it I do applaud, the consequences of it I do fear could mean that I actually will not sit at this chair, <laughs> um, and that we could have ramifications in terms of commissioners should something like this go through, because I do not think that our staff have any way, shape, or scope to be able to deliver on the motion that we as governments are putting on the table here right now, and that, that will turn our council and our district upside down. Councillor Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, one minute. If I, can, if, I can, if I can just give a slightly alternative argument and 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 sway you towards the support, I realise some of the issues that have been brought up, I'd like to do some more yet. But I think this reflects, and the story of this reflects the frustration. I know I sat around the table and we went through line by line by line, but from a government point of view, this is a big picture, in my opinion, and and that is, I get enormous number of complaints about our rates and the state of our rates. And I look at that and then such something I do know is about when I look at the cost of doing some of these things and the increasing cost of the neglect that's happening here. And I'll say something has to change. And that's operation. I'm not putting the finger at anybody but in the sense and I think and I know there are issues want but that's an operational thing. And so the, so what we have on the table right now is is I think uh, uh, um, the frustration that exists that you need to do things properly. And look at it differently. Um, I look at it in terms of our two organisations, and I've run organisations that I've done, and if they a lot more efficient, if you will, where are we going to make those calls that we can actually look at efficiencies throughout our organisation? And as a government, there have been able to do, maybe not in the public that we're seeing here, but I'd like the opportunity to address those in maybe the long term plan to the government and seriously address them. And be prepared to take the, the hard knocks in the spirit because that is what our rate is actually facing right at the moment. And, and let's look at that going forward. How are you going to do it? Because the arguments that we sit around the table like actually can sympathise with them all, but something needs to change. We should not be doing the same thing constantly. That's the point. Thank you, Memo. And um, I'd just like to highlight a vote for wider version of the city orders. Uh, and I'd also like to highlight an amendment to the current motion. Uh, so that means that we would do an amendment to the current motion. Um, and we have the sentence of the city. Yeah, yeah. 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 
First and foremost, uh, in terms of the current motion, I'd just like to highlight that um, the frustration that we've had about having workshops to discuss issues, when really these items should be tabled at council, and for us to have free and frank debate that we elected here to act on behalf of our ratepayers. It is all very well for us to spend other people's money, but we leave at the end of the day, someone has to pay. And for us, that's our ratepayers. We have a very large district, and we have very few people that are that are actually paying. When it comes to rate remission, if we give remissions to people, then the other people in that plan have to pay for that remission that is given. It's not we don't rate it; it's just other people will pay. We, we're having remissions to allow that. When it comes to the motion that's on the table, a and B and C, I personally would like to see those voted on as separate items. A going on separately, B and C, uh, and I'll table that with the, the movers of the motion, uh, because I think that we can still allow for in line for shadow and amendments, allowing for the, the items in the recommendation that are not a direct negative um, again. Uh, when it comes to the actual operational cost of the organisation, what I have seen is a huge increase in the number of staff that we have. And then we look at the number of spending that we have for our consultants as well, uh, has increased over time. And with the operations of council, a lot of those numbers aren't transparent to us here at the table. And I think that this motion here will speak to us that. Previously, my mother was on the council, and at that time, they actually had a higher percentage of spending on poor infrastructure, such as roading. We look at the far rate and we look at the actual investment that we're getting from central government. Our local share as a number from our local ratepayers should be high to reflect it as our key issue for our district. If you ask any person in our district what our key issue would be, roading is always up there, the top issue. Uh, and when it comes to the current motions that are put here, um, this motion here doesn't allow for a so one, two, three, four would be a direct negative, and then five allows for that. But in terms of governance and operation, we are constantly told that operations as a staff matter do not get into the detail, while the job of operations is actually to come back to governance with options to cut up off. Because when we're spending other people's money, the staff, we may have to actually succeed reducing the amount of spending at an operational level. $1.1 million of operational spending is 1% rate right now. And that is huge for rate plans at this time, for we can be in this financial crisis. And I would like to see that those numbers presented to us from staff. And I enjoy and I actually appreciate having this as a council item where it's not only closed to a workshop and we can have free and frank discussion about the item. I'll now proceed in terms of standing orders with my amendment. Um, so I've already tabled for it to be a vote for by division and for A, B, and C to table the person and movers of the motion to vote on those three separately. Do you have a D or a rerouting of A? No, it's to include one in, the, in terms of the recommendation from staff and the wording there um, to allow for that to be included in terms of the amendments apart from the direct negative, which would be number four. Number three, program number three. No. Number four, number four rates number increases four. Of All the others aren't direct negative, um, but in terms of what I'm hearing from my fellow colleagues, that they, these matters do need to be addressed and they do need to be debated. And in order to do that, that's why I'm moving an amendment as part of this which would then move the whole thing to be a substantive motion and to be voted on by the vision and as individual line items. Do I have seconds out for Councillor Boys and Mind? Uh, for the Board of Clarification, I'm not clear what the amended motion is. The amended motion is to include the original recommendation points one, two, three, and five. Is there a sixth 
thank goodness there is a <laughs> one, two, three, and five to be included in this um, amendment. Do I have a second to do this? Yeah, I'll second that amendment. Councillor Boy, would you like to speak to your amendment? Sorry. So Steve's still in there, plus you now. It's Steve's uh, Councillor McNally's amendment, A, B, and C, and then Councillor Foy's foreshadowed amendment is to include to A, B, and C. Points one, two, three, and five from the original recommendation. So we have three, which is seeking to add all of those additional dollars into the capital group project, and we have a resolution not to displace the other one. The other capital works programs within the existing. $106.9 million, of which are not listed, obviously. And those can be reduced in order to allow for the table items in number three, except that um, those line items under and the deep the hundred and six point nine million are not provided to us in detail. Therefore, it's not a direct negative, it's just we don't have the detail. Can I please see Councillor McNally's original one? I'm struggling to see how the addition of points of the points you raised at the original point can go through given the wording of the original amendment. Okay. There are three operational expenditure increases within your foreshadowed amendment council board. Um, recommendation one, Roman numeral two, additional operating budgets of 71,000 for the Matula Centre, as well as uh, recommendation three, but the additional $1,000 of operational budget for professional fees for the drainage districts in point five. A and B are operational increases for to reinstate the place making for the Tibet Community Board and also the coordinate committee coordinator $87,000, which are direct negatives to point A of Council McNally's original amendment. I'm trying to order that it's, 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 it's talking about my next week of operations. The staff will need to come back to us about what other operations we they're going to reduce to allow it to not be increased. I'm not saying it's either or. That's the job of operations, not of governance, to reduce the cost to allow for non increase. Not up to governance to decide. All right, your amendment is accepted on that then. That's what we've been moved and seconded. Um, I am aware that Councillor Halkyard had a way that did her hand up for the original amendment. We now move into debate for the amendment to the amendment from Councillor Foy. Councillor Foy, if you'd like to speak to your foreshadowed amendment. Thank you, Member. Um, so I'm still going to move with the amendment to the amendment. Um, I'm going to move with the amendment to the supporters of the Turner Centre here in our gallery today. Um, I just like to table in terms of the Turner Centre that, um, that everyone, I think, in general supports the facility. It's definitely um, a facility that's used a lot by um, the Kent Petty and the Eastern Ward area. And in fact, a lot of people say it's Kent Petty's Hall. Uh, and, and I think I would agree with that statement 100%. Um, the question for me, though, is in terms of the district rates compared to the general rates. Is all of the halls in Pekku and the halls in the Western would have paid for from the war rate. 
and yet the turn of centre proposal here is for it to be paid for by the general rent, uh, and it'll be used by the whole district in the same way, um, no matter if you're at Kiahapua or if you're in the Hokianga, to someone that needs to be to will fund the general rent. So I would question this being paid for from the general rate and um, it to be paid for from the ward rate is 100% acceptable because I 100% agree that it is the, the kitty kitty call and that it should be supported to remain a key facility for kitty kitty and uh, to allow its ongoing um, future use uh, and to be made. Right, Councillor Foy, <laughs> understanding all this, I need your amendment to be seconded, seconded. by a person who has not yet spoken. Councillor McNally seconded your amendment has not yet spoken, so I will look for a seconder who has not yet spoken. Councillor Diskovich, thank you. Just tidying up to my side of things. Please continue. Um, in terms of the other motion, uh, parts of the motion, uh, in terms of the submissions and make a note of all the submissions that form part of this giant agenda. I'll note that and acknowledge the submissions uh, of which uh, a lot of the people I think um, supported the turn of centre um, remaining in council ownership or moving to council ownership. Uh, and uh, the only proposal that I'm highlighting is for that to be the paper by ward rates. Uh, adopt the fees and charges. Uh, I don't have any proposed changes to the fees and charges at the table. Uh, and in terms of the capital program requests, um, these are capital changes, not offheads. So they will be capitalised uh, and don't actually form on to be part of the extra cost that CapEx funding would. The 30000 of operational budget for professional fees for stormwater resource consent for the drainage district. Um, that's actually paid for as a targeted rate to land drainage rate. So that's not affecting uh, general rates or affecting um, OPEX of uh, general rates either. That's a targeted rate, which was agreed to by the drainage board. See <coughs> uh, um, below that, that relates to capital programs that we've already highlighted. We don't have the line items in our stuff even just this morning to have that breakdown of every single line item. I think the key aspect of the board's huge number is the um, consultant space, which is a large number that we do not get them in a breakdown on, uh, and uh, which isn't transparent in terms of that pending apart from it being a large bucket um, at the disposal for consultants and uh, for professional fees. Uh, in terms of the capital program, it's listed at 106 million. Uh, I'd just like to note the amount of carry forwards that we always have for our capital program. We never deliver the whole thing. And um, this amount of capital program that's proposed, uh, although it says that amount, um, I'll also be looking to see the actual delivery of that in terms of um, the amount that our staff can physically deliver within a, a construction season. Uh, in terms of number five, that the council approves a reinstatement of the placemaking. Um, the other two boards have their placemaking funding there. Um, and I don't know why or how it would be here. The Turkey Community Board didn't get the same placemaking funding. Uh, and um, in terms of, uh, just to summarise, that I think that these aspects can be covered and that the staff will need to come back about cutting the cost in terms of operation spending, and that the increase every single year is going to be hurting our ratepayers, and that's who we're led here to represent. And our staff operationally, they're all in the detail, and we're constantly told not to get into the detail, so it'll be up to them to bring the detail to us in order to cut the cost of the operational spending. Uh, Councillor Kleskovich has seconded to this amendment. Oh. I would bring the floor up to those wishing to speak to Councillor Boy's amendment. I can see Councillor Alcat Hardwick to Anna Sorry? Councillor Alcat Hardwick. You'd like to speak to Councillor Boy's amendment? Uh, yeah, I like it. Uh, total call. Um, I suppose uh, I just really wanted to say that. You know, I've read all the feedback about rates. I, I, I commend what, what um, Steve McNally and um, 
Mary Radich was saying. Um, so the only only thing I really want to add is that um, I still feel that there's a couple of capital project project projects that can be whittled back. But other than that, that's all I've got to say. Absolutely. Excuse me, speaking to the amendment, um, a conversation was made about loans, and as you rightly like mentioned, we should we have a workshop on that on the 29th? Now, we're all aware that our loans are in a managed decline stage. Six years ago, our bar rate was increased to 16.10, which puts us at the highest in the country on the budget and violence to recognise the um, Social deprivation, deprivation of the exercise of our network and the rights of capability to pay. At the current level, a lot of work is done and look at the cost to maintain our network. People far smarter than I determined that it costs 1.8 times the national average to maintain our network at the second level. And these are the things that we put into our asset management plan and it's a mental work under the chain every three years. For funding. The fact that we have been successful at getting the funding has elevated uh, this conversation now across the country to a national conversation. And it dovetails on all the work that we did in the previous two and advocating for changes to the national funding to ensure that we're funding to achieve a level of service for the on the road. Changing our income today. We will not change that as a part of the conversation. If we don't adopt the annual plan today, if we adopt an annual plan today based on the very uncertainties, I want those operation costs to come here, but I want to start matching on how they improve 7.7% rate for the rest of the operation and budgets. I'm not sure that that was past order, and I would invite a comment from the chief to get a lot of us on that because we are not telling the right part what it is that we're actually going to be spending our money on. That's just an open question. I don't know if I can strike the rates on an open ended question of we're not going to put the rates up, we don't know what we're going to take out of it. I think that runs the risk of the mortality of worrying about that. I worry about conversations when we talk about carry forwards. We not we all always have carry forwards. Roading is funded in a three-year cycle. Year one is inevitably around now that we've got the money, we go away, we do the design, we do the consenting work that's required, we do the tendering. We might not start the capital construction until year two or year three. Having a carry forward is not a bad thing. That's the design. I would be really worried if we ran an organisation where we only started swinging the hammer on the 1st of July and we had to hang up our outfit on the 30th of June. Capital projects will always spare years and might be subject to resource consent conditions or weather related conditions. So I don't want it to be assumed that we can carry forward is a bad thing. In regard to the tuna centre, because it's been raised, we have a number of facilities in this district that we've funded from the general aid. Um, facilities where they generally have widespread clients on the public and widespread appeal to the public. Or they serve a district wide facility. We have started to work and just need to have a council and on what we're going to do here in the hospital. If we start having these conversations that only boards, you must fund everything within your board, that is particularly messy given that we know about 60% of the rates from the system. So if we start to drill down an avenue of saying only money collected and be speaking, I think that might significantly penalise. Other boards moving forward. We do need to recognize that we have a district at some point need to be funded for by the district. I think the two seniors one of them. I have never since 30 years heard it be called the Kitty Kitty Pool. 
becomes that is now part of the cultural theatre. Hopefully, one day with everyone here in the front row, we can get the leadership. Thank you. Any further speakers to Councillor Hills? I mean, uh, thank you, Councillor Cameron. I suppose I'm, as a, as a new, new member and uh, representing my own across the Taito Uh I'm actually quite lost in the discussion because this is the this is the behavior that we will present at every council group as opposed to a workshop. I want to sort of put to us that there have been a number of robust workshops on all these avenues. And today we've learned something. We've learned something where we can talk to or talk past whether your staff or whether your governments. I don't believe in it, we're naturally. I'm, I would like to say that I'm sitting on a fence in this, in this area, because to me, uh, and I want to bring something up that our CD invited every one of us at that last workshop, and that was, if you have something, Come to see me before so that there are no surprises. If we want surprises, then let, let's so get, let's put it all on the floor and we will be here. But if we want to have a robust discussion and uh, the items that have come up are totally different to the, to the thinking and our preparation that I've come to the group. And it doesn't, it doesn't actually uh, place me in a position where I am supportive of, of, of a motion or not. It just places me in a disarray that we are sitting here and individually going through something where we cover in the workshop. Now, for our people sitting outside there, they're expecting more than that. I'm sure. But if we're now in the change of behavior council, and it's the intent to come here and debate robustly, then I think it's going to be a more best. But in terms of the Turner Center, the Turner Center is a great example for our area. It is a great example. Because what it does is allow something from the west up on the east. We then reinforce something on the west, which is uh, Maya. We have things in the north that we talk about, to I talk about, not a silo. That is something that we can shift. And if those have to shift it, is us. We're talking about silos. Thank you, Councillor Kappala. Be constructive. Just um, going through getting a chance to talk to the actual items on this paper. Um, I support, I, I was hesitant about the support for the Turner Centre initially, but um, following on from the presentations that we had from um, uh, submitters that came and spoke to us verbally, um, and we, we did actually hear Councillor Boyd that they had groups from as far as Te Hapu have come to the Turner Centre for <laughs> performances and, you know, all, all over our region, but I'm going to come to that event centre as well. It's, it's the only one of its size um, to be able to cater to some of the types of performances and um, I've been to a number of awards events there as well. It's the only only building of 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 the for the capacity that you need. That's the only building that we have in our region. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to um, say that I that, and um, I do want to um, 
voted against some of the items in number three. Um, so I guess we need to start going to line by line on for everybody who sits voting wise. Uh, before we do so, if we vote line by line, does every single item line down the second? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Y
um, almost two years, or actually two and a half years, and um, from the original support of the Japanese Mental Health Society, which was clear through our consultation with our community in that direction. Uh, so as a good landlord, we will go against faster as a much practical option because people deserve new houses and infill development and allowing staged approach to allow those tenants to move into the newly constructed housing, which um, an outside provider can do. And they're much better landlord than us, as Council has shown, over the many decades that we have had the portfolio and our management. Uh, Further to that, that allows for them to get a subsidy from the federal government. Uh, when it comes to my current uh, amendment and looking at item one, um, I have uh, moved what is actually in the recommendation, which is, as it's written in the paper here, um, that it would be paid for by the district grants. Uh, I recognise that at this current time, Tegu is paying for our own halls, and the Western Ward is paying for their own halls, and there are a number of halls in the Eastern Ward that are paid for by the board as well. Uh, and uh, I'd just like to support uh, the couple of grants about um, the Western Ward and people from Tegu using it as an art centre. Uh, so that will remain as it is, um, and that's to support the Turner Centre. Um, in terms of the remissions, that's currently as written in the recommendation to support that and to allow for the remissions policy and also to support the submission. What my amendment does is it allows for points raised in uh, Council McNally A, B, and C to be voted on separately, uh, being one of those separately being the health and family, the other um, separate issue is the roading. Uh, and I did ask about uh, the roading extra costs from the storm damage, and the numbers had not been presented to us as the lead members. But from what I'm told, that there is additional operational capital expenditure from storm damage to our roads that we have not allowed for in terms of the budget. And allowing for that as part of our key infrastructure requirements for the public is a huge issue. And the number one thing that we get contacted about on the little data. So, in closing, the amendment allows for these issues to be addressed, as well as to allow the original uh, motion of the FEMO business of session motion to be addressed. Thank you, Councillor Foy. Can I have the voting of my please for Councillor Foy's amendment? You can start all the rest of the dinner. It's fine. I've been here all day. If someone gets on my um, appointment this afternoon, yeah. Yeah, I will not be going to. Um, So we will uh, come to the ask for a vote by division of the board each point as well. We will take recommendation, original recommendation point one, which forms your agreement that we partner with to the centre to get it to live an arts and culture group, that we accept the proposal to take over ownership of the building, and that additional operating budgets of 71,000 are in the for the cost back and maintenance of the external driver company building. And then comes to replace the outstanding balance of the West Pit loan around $1 million in excess the guarantee and ongoing interest payments and then start developing an operating agreement in conjunction with the Turner Centre Board. We'll put that to a vote, please. Deputy Mayor Strickland. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Councillor Coy. Councillor Coy. Bye. Councillor Havakia. Four. Councillor Kappa. Aye. Councillor Fiskovic. Aye. Councillor McNally. Aye. Councillor Kovic. Councillor Rakina. Aye. Councillor Vesic. Aye. And I'm in favour. B. Enable the housing development on Māori freehold land that we adopt the policy. And staff establish clear application guidelines. Mm -hmm. 
Are there any council report? Council report. Council how do we done? I Council of Cutler. Aye. Council of Kliskovich. Aye. Council of Nadelli. Aye. Council of Radic. Aye. Council of Aguina. Aye. Council of Research. Aye. None in favour. See, I mean, councils for each provisions, policies to and include it, and the council approves any current and future policies to include this new rates policy for enabling housing development on the free health there. Get the initiative. Thanks. That's the report. Is that what we just voted on? Um, we voted to adopt it. This is to amend our current policies to include it. Councillor Boyd. Councillor Howard, how do we do? Aye. Councillor Cutler. Aye. Councillor Cleskey Bosch. Councillor McNally. Aye. Councillor Ravage. Councillor Aiken. Aye. Councillor Research. D. I'm in favour. <coughs> Council notes all other comments made in the submissions but makes no change to the end plan 2324. I don't think we can vote on on D. Sarah, it's a direct thing to the uh, council. I think you would, and then I had to make an issue. You've got a lot to do. Next time, throw something at you. Two, adopt fees and charges. The council amends the attached schedule of fees and charges to replace council and the partial fee types for fees and expenses for the consents and clients and signatures. And the council adopts the schedule of fees and charges for 23 24. Deputy Shepherd, Council of Board. Council of Board. Aye. 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 Council of Three additional capital program requests. The council approves the additional capital program funding of the following. We want that line by line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's read. Councillor Hakia, how do we have a question? Kia ora. Aye, um, I, I'd like to recommend that we amend the uh, amount for Kohu Kohu Hall on the grounds that um, there are subsidies of um, available, and so I'd re uh, amend that to 200,000. I recommend you vote against this then and then put that up when it comes back to a substantive motion. Mm -hmm. The amendment that's on the table for voting is reads. It's already a completed amendment to the original amendment. So we'll take it as it's read for the mm -hmm. um, And we're doing this line by line. Um, Council of Hoi. I'm requesting that we that you withdraw your request for voting by division, and that councillors who wish to vote against something just ask that they be um, noted, recorded. So we've got 14 items here that you'll, you'll be asking me to call for vote by division on. I'm just very much aware that if the substantive motion also fails, this comes back to the table yet again for us to individually vote on too. No, okay, call and call and call can I put voting for Deputy Mish Jackson. Councillor Court. Against. Councillor Radich. I'll be called and call. Councillor McNally. Aye. Councillor Kleskovich. Aye. Councillor Lackey. Councillor Kappa. Aye. Councillor Research. Aye. Councillor Boy. No. I am also against. Sorry, we'll go we'll go again. Sorry, uh, by Dolly. Deputy Minister. 
Council McCall. Council Hathcote Halfway Down. Against. Councilor Cutler. Aye. Councilor Kriskovich. Aye. Councilor McNally. Aye. Councilor Radic. Councilor Lakina. Aye. Councilor Vesic. Aye. And I am four. Uh, I was joking. <laughs> this carries six five. Remember that it is a capital contribution, so it's only how much we need to use in one case. Maritime Life Commissions. Did you get check, please? Aye. Councillor Court. Aye. Sorry, I've just left. Um, for the designs three, are we in line able to withdraw the vocal by the terms of the table if you carry on the other subjects? Maritime lighting mentors is what we're voting on. All those in favor of the CI. Aye. Those opposed. Aye. The motion is carried. All community vote group parking. All those in favor of the CI. Opposed, abstentions, the motion is carried. High power point, storm water. All those in favor, please say aye. Abstentions, the recommendation is carried for the substance. What you say, not this isn't a resolution. Um, objects, abstentions, in favor, please say aye. Opposed, abstentions, against. Against Councillors Napali and Kliskovich abstention from Council Kappa. Stormwater reactive renewals, number seven. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed? All in favor, Councillor Napali. Absolutely reactive. Objections? It's more original. I mean, I think it's incredibly reactive, and it's making me react too. I just want to explain to you. We haven't got back to that yet. Number eight. Mark the stormwater. Aye. Opposed. Abstentions. Uh, the recommendation is carried. Some of all and new car fire. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Abstentions. The recommendation is carried. Drainage districts resource consent. All those in favor, please say aye. I'm against. Councillor McNally and Councillor Radich are against. Um, I am assuming that if you're against, you'd like it recorded. That's otherwise, please let me know. There's abstentions. Recommendation is carried. Kitty Kitty Kumihiki Stage 2. All those in favour? Opposed? Abstentions? Councillor McNally, abstention. Recommendation is carried. Russell Wastewater Treatment Plant. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The recommendation is carried. Wastewater Reactive Health and Safety. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Councillors Piskovich, McNally, and Foy. I'm fine for. Oh, sorry. Those opposed? Councillor. They should already be doing that too. Thank you. And abstentions. Yeah. Councillor Rakina abstained. The recommendation is carried. Um, what is it? Um, the 400,000 for the town square on the table. It's been raised. It's set in the initial for the 400,000 for the town square. That's not raised as part of the motion. Can't be Yes, that is true. Uh, the, uh, Thank you, Mr. 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 Keep rates down with all the add-ons we're doing in, but in any what case. The ownership that that has been introduced not by the budget. Plus, there's been no opportunity for the budget. 
Thousand operational budget for private fishing fees for our circuit drainage districts. Uh, all those in favor for the CLA? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Yes. Opposed to the councillors McNally, Biscovich, and Radish for the CLA? Abstentions? Aye. Councillor Cuffer abstained. Uh, the recommendation is passed. C. Amending the capital. Program with projects totaling 1.7 acres and budget 122 23. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Point C has passed. D? No, that passed. D, the total capital work program for 23 and a half million. What's the first noting? D. All those in favour, please say aye. Opposed? I'm opposed. The C and D. All in favour, please say aye. And for D, Councillor Radic is abstaining from D. Uh, and then point five of Councillor Foy's amendment. Are the issues that the council approves the rent statement of one hundred thousand dollars for place making for the Tahuku community board? That council approves the role of the coordinator of the Tahuku committee. Aye. 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 The uh, to the um, the Sorry, I'll just um, remember that when you're voting, you'll either voting for or against or abstaining. Give the reasons for your vote for the area of the day rather than at the time of the day. Well, we're going to be here to the cows currently. All right, that brings us to the end of the amendment, and it now forms part of a substantive motion. The substantive motion is A, B, and C of Council McNally's original amendment, plus those that we can just vote to from Uber's assistance. I don't hear it. I don't hear it. I don't hear it. Right. 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 We've just voted on the amendment. It's formed part of the substantive motion, which we will now vote on. But as it's a substantive motion, we need a move before that gets. The substantive motion is now Councillor McNally's original A, B, and C, plus one, two, three, and five. Oh, so we have voted on one, two, and three to form part of the substantive motion. So include it as a part of A, B, and C that comes from the family's original amendment. And now we have a substantial motion for the five A, D, and C of Councillor McNally's amendment, plus one, two, three, and five of Councillor Foy's amendment, which is now a substantive motion to be moved on. Thank you, Councillor McNally. And I will need a second for the substantive motion, which again, just so everyone's clear, is Councillor McNally's original reading, A, B, and C, plus point one, two, three, and five that we just voted on from. We now reopen for debate because standing orders lets us do that and it's a new fresh start. Everyone is back at zero and speak if they like to. Councillor McNally, substantive motion. So there's a couple of comments made today and I'll respond in a minute. I'd just like to draw your attention to the executive summary 
It says the statutory terms of the annual plan is to confirm differences from what was proposed in the first one year of voluntary current plan. And then uh, third bullet point, the purpose of this deliberative report is to provide the information required to enable council to make final decisions to minimise the rates requirement for the 23 24 financial year. And while well, continuing to be thinking of recovery and ensuring a minimal impact on the service. So with all that in mind, and I'll read through the various things and reflecting on my time to date, I've been here seven months. I've worked out, so probably only got 32 months in total when you take out Christmas holidays and different things. So seven months, that's 22% uh, given to go on. I'm one of 11 councillors, six councillors have returned. So they potentially had more information than I did around this information. I've been asking for this information since September, around a run of financial um, things. Council of Court made comments and various others made comments relating to we've had the opportunity to cover operational and capex costs during workshops. Workshops don't allow us to vote on what we don't want. Of the ones that were provided in May 23, had I had the opportunity, I would have only said yes to six of them, 20 out of the 21, 28%. And that's a substantial amount of capex. But you don't need to get the opportunity to record that. Then if we go to, let's just talk about the um, long-term and annual plan. Long term plan has been in place before I look at it. It's been consulted on, you know, this was mentioned, various issues. That's great. They're all workshop. It's not in a council meeting where we can talk about it. If we just talk about the National Land Transport, I'm aware there's no change to this. It's no different to our long-term or annual plan. What changed last week regarded specifically road maintenance, and my concern is that if we don't have the funding in this annual plan, it's a case of our we're in trouble. We won't be able to get any additional money out of the front. It's a very simple way that works, unless it's 100%, and I've urged the roading staff to go for that 100% option. If you look at the um, items 3 and C and D that I just spoke against, Approved to amending the 23-24 capital program with projects totaling 19.7 million. That comes back to the <coughs> confirmed differences to the corresponding year of the current long-term plan, which is an executive summary. Same applies to the total capital program. Then political appeal. <laughs> According to you, this is political suicide. Several people in the table. I'm not here for long term. I just want to improve things. Change is required, and that's desperately required fast. I don't actually care whether you vote, the, vote against the um, rates or not. The point is, it needs to be aired. The reason I put up no rates, the rate income to remain the same level, we're in an economic downturn. There's increased costs across for everybody, interest, food, fuel, and particularly vehicle repairs. Every rate payer has had to cut their costs. Every yeah. rate has had to cut their costs. Just think about that a minute. In my opinion, there's been insufficient in information. There was no option offered of how we might reduce. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll appreciate it for saying that. We um, with that. They were, but no formal, um, I, I certainly can't of anywhere where this is the impact we would have on our service level if we took this out of the um, OPEX. The back the road again, which is the government, um, I've got some idea of where that's going, but as was pointed out, it's, it's a work in motion. The rating, the new valuations, the mistakes, or the release, the late release of the revised rating valuations from QB towards uh, Mother. And then we've had mistakes made integrating the valuations to the rating database. The ANT surprised the rate payers on receipt of a new rating valuation and attached new rate notes. Has had my bloody email and no money red hot to meet that. I understand there's reasons that may have happened, but it's just simply not. I just don't think it's acceptable. Um, the roading, if we just think about the um, 
what I was trying to do around writing. Please provide the necessary info relating to the contractual obligations and the alterations to the government voting to ensure Council's shares covered. Now, if we, if we just, um, the contracts increase every year, so we get a reduced budget to use because of the cost increases, which I mentioned earlier, if you want the materials. Once again, the economic downturn and the end of the bad bloody cross escalation as well. Just nuts. Regarding the pension and housing, um, I just think it needs to be addressed and rapidly. That motion's been on the table for a while. If there's a um, if there's a significant reasons why we should hold it, then we need to know what this government's would need to know. I'd, uh, I'd like to know what is the actual income from the housing stock? What's the operational cost? Then? We're looking at a catch up for 4.8 million or something. Um, what's the uh, depreciation, the amount of depreciation that sits in the accounts? And the other thing we haven't looked at, what does it actually do to the accounts that we divest, get the money back in the tin, remove the depreciation, remove that OPEX, and so on? Lose a little bit of income, I doubt it's very much. Uh, and the carry forward station. I'd like those carry forward projects rather than just to say 19.7 or 109 million. Let's see the costs, the timelines, and the milestones. So, resource consents were mentioned a minute ago. If a resource is going to send 500,000, we're not going to be able to get to do it until 25, 26 years. Shift it all that out to there. So, we can use that capital funding to do something else. It's the only way we're going to improve things. Uh, what else? I think that's about me, actually. And as I said, it's up to everyone here. I just wanted, there's two things that I really um, have enjoyed about this. First, it's the debate and the open forum. I don't think dealing with other people's money, we should be in workshopping or um, in the background, unless we're negotiating a particular contract or something like that. We'll get to that paper, I guess. That's all for me now. Thank you, Ma'am uh, Thank you, Councillor McNally. Perhaps we should schedule um, formal council meetings for three days a week so we can hear everything public forum, but I'll be willing to take that conversation offline. Uh, just a point of clarification um, to the current motion, but um, we'll be voting um, on A, C, C separately. That's right. Thank you. I'll be speaking to the substantive motion of... Thank you. Are there any more speaking? I haven't made any more Council of Voices. I think we will look through the motion. Um, I've already spoken to the uh, points below the state uh, in terms of the amendment. I can't see points A. I'll take a look at the English just because they're too yeah, the top of the um, I haven't spoken to AZC and I'll, I'll speak to them in the substantive motion. And uh, it's clear that we'll be voting on each separately. Uh, the first point A is about the rates rise, and I understand that the current proposed rates increase is 6.7%. Uh, and uh, with this motion that's been moved, uh, that would mean that we would have no rate increase. Uh, so operational costs would have to be reduced by, uh, by that amount in order to cover, um, not, reduce, not increasing the rate. Uh, I'm in support of that. Um, we haven't actually had no rates rise in, I can't even remember how long. Yet. This is the time that we need to actually show that the rate payers, that their money is valuable, that in a downturn at the council, we are also paying our fault. Uh, and that as rate payers, what we've heard about the land value changes, we haven't had a presentation from QB. The presentation from QB is essential to actually show each uh, each category of land use activity and how the land values have increased and how that relates to the differentials in terms of each land use category and how that interrelates with the numbers and the dollars of each land value 
increase to what last year's rates were. Um, so currently we don't have that information available. And as uh, Council McNally has raised, um, that there um, is a key issue in terms of our rate pays and that huge increase that a lot of people have contacted all of us about, about the significant land uh, value increases. Uh, point two about the roading budget uh, and that being covered uh, capex and opex. The key point raised is about us getting the percentage of far and available we had our local share percentage available in order to get reached. And if we don't budget and allow for that, though, that storm damage and that essential work on our roads, which will take years in order to remedy, will not be consented, will not be delivered and we will miss out on the subsidy as well. So point two is key. Uh, the last aspect there in terms of um, the aspects we haven't spoken about um, in uh, the amendment is the pensioner housing. Uh, this is an issue that is a surprise to staff. In fact, uh, I raised these issues in the workshop and I also raised what Councillor McNally has identified is it should be coming to council to have these debates because in a workshop we can't have the free and frank discussion uh, that allows for the motions to actually get to us here at the table. I agree with having that divestment faster and then have the op actual options of divesting some of the housing first if we need to upgrade to that uh, and allow for the public sector to spend their money instead of the rate has money out of their pocket. And um, that can also allow for government subsidies that we as a council do not currently have access to. Uh, in short, uh, in terms of the current motions there, as well as the as well as the amendment that has been added to the being substantial motion, those three points make sense at this point in time in a recession, and when you're spending other people's money, that is the most important money because money not spent is money not taken out of great pay. Uh, Councillor Halkia Paramita and then Council Court. Interpreter Smith. Yes, we've got a few further to say. She is the first one. Tala Tala. Uh, Councillor Court. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm interested in the comments we need to develop in capital cost timelines. Everything that to be taken in, and the budgets. I'm not quite sure what that I mean, relates to. In regards to emergency works, we're currently sitting at 100% far. That is unprecedented in New Zealand that I'm aware of. I can't remember a single time that has ever happened before. How long that will continue for? Who knows? But at the moment, our emergency works are sitting at a 100% uh, hybrid I have that, longer I have that, we do. So when we sit, when I sit here and I listen to, we need to budget for our local climate upgrade for emergency works, we do. We know there's up to $3,000 in there. But it's going to take more than that to get to me. But what does that look like? We don't know yet. We need to allow the ETA to do their work and come back to us. And that might need a report for variation. We have, as I said earlier, we have two in the agenda today. It's not at all unusual that staff will come back you know, due to cost overrunning or an unforeseen circumstance that we're going to be asking for unfunded expenditure. We need to sit there and wait for that work to be done so we can have a report in front of us so we can make an informed decision. At the moment, all we're saying is we need to budget for our local car rate. Dial comes down to the road to the Yes, they are. But what does that sum look like? If we're not going to have that, we go for a zero percent. Balance. Comment is made that they paid money is valuable. We said it's an old absolutely a big thing. And just as the rate pay is a privilege of the so are we. So we know that the products here in the top concrete are up between 60 and 80 percent. So if we say we want to adopt a zero rate, that means something. 
no one's been able to quantify what their stock is worth. Does that mean we stop growing customers at community doors? Does that mean we stop placing them? Does that mean we stop feeding our public toilets and maintaining our inventory? Everything has a cost implication and an effect on someone in the district. We haven't had those conversations. In regard to the 400,000 projects that are making, I'm going to oppose that. And the reason is not that I'm against the project. But if somebody wants 400,000, it needs to come to this council with a report. There's nothing to stop the report coming into a post adoption of the annual plan for a variation of unbudgeted funds with the cost of the At the moment, we just had a thumbs up against the growing wind about $400,000 overrun for a project. Yes, it's been, it, the rate pay has been hard to come. The rate pay has not had the opportunity to get visibility of. It's really important for good governance that reports come to the council <coughs> and the governing body of a given political union can look at those reports and they're in the public's arena. So therefore, the public have the opportunity to comment on whether or not they're prepared to pay an additional $400,000 to a board rate. They haven't had that opportunity yet. They have no reason to suggest that they probably wouldn't support it. It's just a time initial that we need to follow the real process. Not at all, got down to do it in Thank you, Councillor McCall. Um, further comments from the members? I am aware that there were. Um, as highlighted just then by Council Court, there was a request to have uh, a, the further amendments for the substantive motion in the terms of the Tahaku Place Making Fund, not the Tahaku Redevelopment Revitalization Fund, and also the Coil Call Report that haven't been put so far. Can I please <laughs> Before we pass over to you to speak to this, so what we want to change for the probably we have had so Janice, can you just speak to this and what you should do about the we could just remove it completely to you and bring it back as already there. said something there. And then if we need more money, we should bring it back. Yeah, I think for a moment. And there's still a lot of engagements that needs to happen with the community. Yeah. Remove so, this, you'll see that they have people back to remove it completely. It and it can be brought back should we need, but we have got some applications and the things. This is all part of the community. I don't have my call, call, it was 200,000. Okay, leave that 200 then. 200. Yeah, thank you, Fire Hill. Are you going to speak to that? Or what's about? Um, just wanted to underscore, the Fire Hill is in the know with the funding. Um, and if we have 600 in there, then we're least likely to be successful in our grant with the place where we would like to. The other thing is, um, is in need of a refurbishment, but first we need to sit down with the community and you know go through what that may look like and what they're willing to pay the rates and rate. Yeah. Is that a targeted rate of the corporate community or ward rate of the and the question doesn't ask in court for residents what they think about the entire Kaikuhi or Kiyomi community. <laughs> space that we're looking at it from that means. <laughs> Councillor Court is second, then would you like to speak to that? Everyone might jump. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy for you to put your laws after this one. Okay, I'm going to put this to vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Opposed, opposed, opposed by councillors Radich, 
Please give back to Chair McNally abstentions. All right, that has been amended accordingly. Councillor McCoy is the original mover of the substantive motion that we will to include. And for the Thank you, revitalization. Town Square. Town Square. Town Square. Second, doesn't that please? Aye. Uh, Councillor McCoy, which Councillor McCoy to speak for that? Um, thank you. It, it's not a surprise to me that it means in the media uh, it's been highlighted about um, the vandalism that's occurred throughout the project, which has reduced the amount of money that we have in order for delivery, all the other funding, um, seven million and that was from the future government in terms of the grant. So this is from the board rates, which is a very small amount considering the help of the central region the local community. And at this point, a thousand more dollars to be delivered. Uh, it's already been discussed, and we have the project and we've engaged, and it's what else is going to be delivered. And the most, I guess. Councillor Pesca, I'm sorry to. I support this, then I think we will not support it. I will speak against this um, amendment, not because I'm against the revitalization of the town square coast park, but because it's outside of the process. So I would expect for any one of our projects and communities to also have to go through. While I would like to um, slip an extra 400,000 bucks for the uh, Papa uh, Hawaii Stadium here in Kaipo, or Tikwa, right on the sports hub over in Kiki, or for any number of significant projects across our district, which is being the revitalization, the energization of our places and spaces. I think it's an unfair process to chuck this in within this scope without it having come to us as a separate agenda item, which staff are able to break down and pull for us in terms of the overall spend, where that money came from, what through the money is required, how that is going to fulfill the scope and function of it. I'm thinking of our Memorial Park, which we've just seems to be um, indefinitely holding off the uh, grand opening of and what 400,000 extra dollars could do in that way, shape and scope. In terms of what we're trying to achieve here, so it's outside of the processes I'm comfortable with that I expect everyone to have to follow, which is why I'm mean, speaking against this amendment. If you don't open the floor to further discussions, otherwise, we will go to Council of Wars right at the point. Council of Green. Uh, the Scott Hill Park project is from the generator, so I'm expecting both the generator, it's solely from the Wall rate. And we'll be solely facing from that area. This is not a surprise in terms of this issue. It's been raised for a number of months. And even just last week, there was a full page article um, mm -hmm. in the paper about it. Uh, and in order for delivery, uh, physical delivery of the study in a week, uh, and this will now be delivered. And actually, probably will result in reduction in cost for us to have it come back and then again having. We'll procure management and separate contract to deliver it. Thank you. We'll put this to the vote. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Councillor Radich, Councillor Court, Mayor Tiffany. Abstentions? Uh, Hilda. Sorry, we'll take this to the vote by division. Can I have the voting sheet up, please? Just help you as well as staff. I am against. Deputy Mayor Councillor Queen. Just wait back to my Councillor Queen. Councillor Councillor Against. Councillor Hapa. Councillor Kleskovich, or Councillor McDowell, or Councillor Radich, or Councillor Aikina Houston, Councillor Vesic. That is five more for a case. That is carried. Congratulations. Oh. All right. Uh, this looks well. We now will return to those further amendments. 
And now we will go to um, Councillor Bandelli, his right of reply for the substantive motion at hand. And we know it's understood at the moment. And I won't be able to get it here. Thank you for that. Can I please have a uh, vote by division for point A? We're voting on um, the points by division sing singularly. What page, please? Oh, it's not in here. It's up there at the same page. Let me get I'm lost. I would like to also, just while we wait, if it's kind of highlight, I will be on holiday during long term plan operations <laughs> next year. And um, Deputy Minister, if they make sure you're ready for the difference. <laughs> <laughs> this is a taste of the big one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, if you could bring up Councillor McNally's original aid. So Councillor McNally's aid is saying you can change and um, the second motion to five six seven. Thank you. Go five six and seven instead. It does not make okay. a difference to me. It does make so, so on point five now, uh, can we just get that here, please? That rates incomes remain at the same level as last year, i.e., there will be no rates rise for the 2020 financial year and the C reviews regarding the cost cutting measures available across the OPEX to address any OPEX shortfalls. I am against that. Thank you, Councillor Corey. Councillor Corey. Corey. Councillor Corey. Councillor Corey. Okay, it's against how can you Four. Councillor Kappa. Four. Councillor McNally. Four. Councillor Bagnelli. Four. Councillor Rakina. Four. Councillor Vucic. Councillor Vucic. Oh my goodness, okay. Back to teaching it or something that he's carrying. All right, number six, rating budgets be urgently updated to cover capex and OPEX, including necessary and pre related to contractual rating obligations, including the alterations government budget related to rating to accounts and covered. I have made my more than what I've Yeah, I'll change the number of this one, surprisingly. Councillor, the Indonesia. Councillor Hall. Okay. Councillor Hall. Four. Councillor Halkia, how are we doing? Aye. Councillor Kappa. Yes, Councillor Fiskiba. Aye. Councillor McNally. Aye. Councillor Radich. Four. Councillor Akinan. Aye. Councillor Vistich. You know. And seven. Pension and housing, there are no maintenance or improvements are made while council produces option to agree that recent shops that the best maintaining process be completed before the first of December 2023. I am against Deputy Mishnah. Councillor Paul. Councillor Paul. Councillor Howard, how are we done? Oh, sorry, what is it again? Pension and housing. That no maintenance or improvements are made while council processes options agreed in recent workshops that are best worth in the December process being completed before the 1st of December 2022. I'd have to say against, I, I agree with it, but I, uh, there are some that need to be approved before December. So it's against, I suppose. Thank you, Councillor Kappa. Against. Councillor Fiskovic. Aye. Councillor McNally. Aye. Councillor Ravich. Mm -hmm. Councillor Akin, Councillor Research. Yeah, yeah. And that concludes the panel. Now we take all of these as a substantive motion. Yeah.
So that's the small, the whole should be big. What's the center of the um, the reduction of the funds in front of the and one the capital of the town square. Made in a new substantive motion because they refer their opinions. Well, what can we vote on as opposed to separately instead of it being one kind of motion altogether? So, the understanding orders, whenever an amendment is put, it then makes it a substantive motion. We had amendments that then came back further amendment and made it a new substantive motion, which I just took as being the movement second day as council and now even yourself, although I'm happy to take a new movement second day, I'm just happy to be the movers and seconders of this new substantive motion, in which case I will go to council and the court's right for the bar. I don't understand why we're doing that this again. Yeah, but but it's a Any time an amendment comes through, that makes it a substantive motion as an entire new motion. So when we have brought in the Kaitaia Town Centre and the Kohu Kohu Wall changes, that makes this a substantive motion that we have to vote on in its entirety. So just for clarity, it includes everything we've just voted as it stands, substantive motion to include all of that, plus those other things. What are the other two items? Can, sorry, can I just get some clarity here? Just to make sure that when this goes through, everyone, it's just made as fun as possible. I know John Carr's been away. Please, sir, I think I'll wait with you, but. So, a substantive motion is where we um, pull together all of the amendments. So, because you made further amendments after voting on a substantive, we do need to then reiterate that as the new substantive motion. So, I will break those two additional amendments that were taken, which were the 400k for the Kaitai Town Centre development and the reduction of the current program for about 200,000. I'm not seeking to re litigate something that I wasn't going for. I just want clarity in terms of what I need to do to share understanding all this for the vote of this. I've moved around a second and then put to the vote the substantive motion, which was everything that we just want to. We voted off each month individually, though. Mm -hmm. What happens if this vote is any longer? So the votes against will still be included in the individual motions. It's mm -hmm. just saying, yes, that's what we've captured. If it was to fail, it would still be good fallback to the individual. Okay. Thank you. Vote by division for the whole shebang. McNally and Boyd. And vote by division, please. And, uh, one point is if the chief person can vote on the individual line on the chief person can do the whole thing and find some motion to be vote on line on the individual motion. Yes. So we are in So, point of clarification this vote that we're doing is just on the Kogu Kogu and Tiahu to the town square. Additions to the substantive motion. So, no, this vote has been for everything that's been voted on so far in relation to the report of the agenda. But we don't need to go line by line. We've already done that. Mm. This is just noting that the motion is everything. I'm in favour, Deputy Minister. Councillor Court. Councillor Foy. Favour. Councillor Harawina. Uh, um, against. Councillor Kappa. Absolutely. Councillor Kliskevich. Aye. Councillor McNally. Aye. Councillor Radich. Councillor Rakinakis. Councillor Vesic. Thank you. And I will be cancelling my <laughs> There's one more item that oh, hasn't been. Right. Right. 
Um, now, according to standing orders, I have to give you all a 10 minute break now, so we will break for 10 minutes. Can I have the light? The light ring is Yeah. yeah.
Thank you for that and welcome back to our uh, ordinary council meeting for the final district councils. We had a significant um, significant implications based on previous resolution just before we went to lunch. Off that and understanding what is 23.5, the verification or alteration by resolution at the same meeting, I am moving, um, moving a motion to make an alteration to item 6.1 that we just uh, voted on. Um, understanding the orders though, I need 75 percent of the district to agree to the alteration of that. If I get that over the line, then I would break my alterations. But I'm moving understanding orders 23.5. We bring an alteration to item 6.1 to the table. Should that be successful, I'll then move my alteration. Uh, I have a second that. Thank you, Mr. Deckford. Um, have you put that to a vote? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, those opposed? Yes. Councillor McNally and Councillor Ford. Any abstentions? The motion is carried with eight percent of that. Now I would like to bring up please item six point one. Thank you. The reason why understanding what is we can bring this back is because of Fresh facts that have come to light as a consequence of that decision, which allows us to bring it back to the table during the same meeting. Um, the alteration I would like to like, I would like to make in this report is to remove point five from this. The decision to remove point five will then mean that we will like we see at annual plan adoption on the 30th of June, an increase of 6.78%, which is below CPI, which is what we would normally take and increase that. Uh, but the ramifications of not doing that means uh, an impossible task for our staff at this time period to find cost savings of approximately $7 million across our operational budgets. Um, so severe concerns in this space. Those folks have uh, brought it upon me to bring this back to the table for reconsideration. Um, the increase is below inflation rates for councils across the table. We know that we have councils like South Waikato, which are um, deliberating on an 18.5% increase. You know that regional councils increase is going to be significantly from where we started at 13 percent to bring it down to 6.5 percent is while in the current economic climate any increase is going to be felt by our residents and i say residents because um those who bring homes in here are going to see the cost some of the rates put across to them as well so it is all of the um, who ultimately contribute to this large pot. Um, I very much want to find a way forward that means that we as an organisation can continue to operate. Um, I take on board that the cuts that have been forecast in here, the conversations that I've received from elected members um, since getting into this office as the mayor, but especially today as well, that there is a um, significant dissatisfaction from the and the level of information and the deliberations and the discussions that we've been having and knowing that our shop is sailing the way that we want to sail. And I share that all well knowing that it isn't just solely on our staff and our organisation to ensure that, but also on me as the mayor to steer that in the right direction. What I'm asking from you today is to find this balance here and that we will ensure that our long-term plan consultation deliberations and processes 
will ensure that we, our country is deeply satisfied that we have enough information to make sound decision making in this space. So um, that's my opening address to moving this on our Paso Collective to get the Ministry of to speak if she wishes. And just quickly, I do support this um, coming back and um, your position on this. Kanika, um, it, it's in line with what I was saying right at the beginning of the debate, but I do believe it's up to the residents and ratepayers to have the say on what services get cut. So um, us making a call to start to cut, um, like to have no increase in rates would mean the staff making cuts and to to the office budget budget and we you don't know where that will be. I think we should go through the process of reviewing how big the pie is and what's spent where through the long term plan process and I'm all in for that. And I'm sure that our um, residents and ratepayers across our district are all um, hungry to have that conversation about what they do or do want to see more of or don't want to see. Well done. Opening up the floor to the debate on the current motion. Anyone like to speak to this proposal? And if it gets over the line, it will be in a 6.7. Can that go up on the board? Sorry? Sorry, can you put it up on the board, please? The, the change. The, the change won't be so much. Stop the change. Councillor Kriskovic, you have an amendment to this. Um, I would like us to strike the rank from this last year's rank. Uh, from, uh, 5 point, uh, 5 as opposed to 6.7. Now, to the chief, uh, as you alluded to, there's considerable um, uneasiness between the members of this table and our staff. And I can say on my hand on how that unless we get the information that we ask for, when we ask for this will not be the last time we start with instant press. So what Councillor Kriskovic is proposing as an amendment is using last last year's rates and increases um, as the number we go to, which would mean the staff would be finding or which would mean we would have to have an extraordinary council meeting for staff to come back to us with the implications and consequences of cutting around $1.5 million from our operation funding. Um, but in order to put this on, I do need to see you. Thank you, Councillor Research. Councillor Research, would you like to speak to this again? Yeah, I support that. And as, as we said before, it was, uh, it, everybody's placing difficulty. Um, raise it. And Council of Technology would raise some issues. And, and, as, and, and I believe we can save significant money in through operating, through uh, exits and the way we deliver. So it's not a case of cutting delivery. And we can look at that. Uh, I think this is wrong from our ability to achieve the federal laws. Opening the floor to anyone who wishes to speak to Mr. Newman. Yeah, Thank you. Were you meaning? Um, I mean, cut $1.34 million from the Olympics budget. That's what I'm playing as a book. We were just getting the wording of this finalised so we can put it up to everyone's a little bit clearer on where we're at and how we'll be voting. What will be voting on? Did anyone else like to speak to anybody? Yes. 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 Thank you to our uh, wonderful governance support staff for the agility in 
the amendments that we've been giving. It's really appreciated. Although the way it's going, I don't think we'll be getting a payment. So, <laughs> <it's true. laughs> I'll just check with councillors Leskovich and research that they're happy with the real the that council increased the total rate by 1.44% for the 2023 2023 years, which would be in line with last year's rates. Councillor Chris, would you like a right of reply? No, thank you. Put that to a vote. Would you like a vote by division? Yes, please. Can I please have a vote for division? Deputy Administrator. Councillor Court. Councillor Court. Councillor Alpine Alpine. Aye. Councillor Kappa. Councillor Kliskevich. Aye. Councillor McNally. I was being struck off for this. We'll put you back on. I'm a coach. You know what I want. Councillor Raj is absent. Councillor Rakina. Councillor Research. And I am against that. That amendment has failed, which means the substantive motion is to remove 0.5, which will see a rate of increase of 6.78%, just so we all want the same page here. Um, as it's now substantive motion, I can open up the floor to further queries if there are any. Put the motion to vote, please. If I could have a vote by division. Deputy Stratford. Councillor Court. Councillor Boyd. Councillor Halki Al Hadamida. I'm not sure what we're doing. What are we voting for? Sorry. We're about to remove the 0% rates increase, which will see our rates increase by 6.78% currently. Uh, yeah, the motion doesn't seem clear to me. So I'm not really sure what that's saying. I would have liked something, somebody to say 6.7%. That would have been easier for me to understand. Sorry, that, I don't understand it. If I, oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Howard, how do we do? Point seven eight percent. Okay. Will be I the don't... consequence of removing point five. Oh, okay. I. Okay, Councillor Kappa. Councillor Kliskovich. Close. Councillor McNally. Close. Councillor Radich. Councillor Rakina. Councillor Research. Five, four, three games. I'm thoughtless. You can just decide on the three me. That's Against the that six, four, and four, four against the motion is carried. Thank you um, very much for patience and for the and for the committee of our staff. We are going to move to um, just for the benefit of everyone. I have had it given the time. I have had a discussion with staff on potential items that we will take off and save for another time. And um, so, bear with me as we jump around our agenda. One of the does need a decision today is district wide rating for water supply and wastewater proposal deliberations on page 76, item 6.2. I believe the council of research was moving an amendment to this, so I think we want to move that to a staff motion and the Council of Researchers, Horsham and Eden, is that Council has lost the proposals to change to a worldwide targeted rate for water supply and wastewater services. 
be a means of revenue and finance policy to include the change for implementation and see the all operation and depreciation trend. Moved by Council and used it to go to September to get amendment. Motion. Yeah, nice. Seconded by Councillor Kappa. The difference here is that rather than being at the district wide, that it is more rated Councillor Moosich. The floor is yours. Yes. Oh. Yes. So that's moving everything to scheme based. Okay. No, you can't go to order you didn't consult on order The consultation was to go at the stage we were to go to district wide. Because there wasn't a consultation that order. Yeah, now you're willing to change a meaning or wording that this is not word that we consulted. Two things of this. And we end it. So none of those ends actually not happen. So we're going to change it. Are we going to change that council? Go to keep on to status quo. Status quo for the long term plan. Sorry, Standing orders 22.5. Sorry, Councillor Research. Yeah. We need the motion to be lost in Steve, and I will invite you to um, put your energy into the debate at that point in time. But status quo amendment is not yeah. going to to the recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. If you can check that, I'll request a second bit to that. That was the last of the staff projects. I've moved the information to the bank. Thank you. Did you check that? Thank you. Thank you. Right. We have a huge number of both the triple plants. We've got five years to do seven plants that are expiring. Pikeforget and Pytaya are underway. Trial and Healy, um, there's some engagement happening. Next is Darwini and Ruffle, then some for renewal of uh, wastewater discharge and consent. And then they will require um, upgrades. So, um, although I um, personally can see, you know, the benefit of everyone having their own targeted rate around the wastewater treatment plant, so you don't feel like you're contributing to somebody else in another part of the district. Gone are those days. We're all using the facilities and. Um, We've all got to take a collective um, district wide approach to wastewater and drinking water services because the costs are astronomical. The NPS for fresh water means that compliance around um, discharge, and so it should be, is um, more strict so that our, our water, our creeks, our rivers will not be polluted and preferred in the corridor um, at the Hearings in Darwin a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, district wide spreads the cost of those that are connected to water or wastewater treatment um, services. It doesn't mean that everyone across our district that has a, has a budget are going to pay towards those. Uh, we've also got some awesome opportunities happening in Kaipu and Kaupaua with the Infrastructure Acceleration Fund. And in the first year that the, those capital projects happen, there will be an impact because an impact on ratepayers there because of the depreciation of those assets once they're delivered. So this is 
that's my other reason for supporting this. We're enabling growth in two communities that are, you know, ready for social housing. They're like, please build them here. Um, so we have to the burden of that cost across the, the connected communities. It's also getting us ready for affordable waters, which is, you know, who knows whether that's going to happen, the better off. Um, Better off, you know, what's it called? What is reform? So it's also getting us in line with how people will be rated when we go under entity A. So yeah, district wide rating is the way to go so that we can meet um, discharge of wastewater to land costs, which are huge. It's the way to go for um, ensuring that rates are equally spread across our district, and it's it's the way to go to ensure that uh, when we get a rates increase of six point seven percent, you know, we, we're evening out the plateau. So the wastewater treatment plant that's just getting some capital expenditure on it isn't, you know, paying four thousand dollars just for its um, wastewater. District wide rating is something that this council had previously, but was um, taken away. And I think it's been at the detriment of many of our smaller communities that have 200 people hooked up to one wastewater treatment plant and now face challenges of um, funding that. Yeah. So, you cover some of the calls for you? Thank you, Mr. Um, I'll call on the TV media. Part of the council when the city based charge of introducing under the NPL is argument at that time. The council's argument at that time was as schemes are coming up for renewal, some communities are wanting a very uh, expensive scheme, but other communities with the potential of acceptance being that are not the least outstanding. Uh, and why should the community that was prepared to accept those being on a lesser standard stay on those communities that were not on a higher standard? The world that we would not consider the lesser standard and the lesser judge consent requirements are uniform now across the district. So that argument no longer applies. This will still up initially some winner of income losing that we know initially, um, the rates of the very poor drop. And I can understand the tension that that brings up for minor sums. But as other schemes come up for their results, that cost will be burdened by everything else. We all benefit from having good water in this district. And it doesn't really matter whether you're expanding it from Tahikos or the Eastern North or the Western Northwoods. We all benefit from having access to the government. Important for our citizens, important for our children, and important for our economy. If we continue to shape those costs to those people with very small scale, with a small number of connections, we are going to make those things And as my colleague has said, if we move to the NTA, thinking nationally at the moment, I think it's going to be entity based charging. Thank you, Councillor. What is Councillor? I have lost my train of thought, so I just wanted to call that time. The only argument I see for this we've heard is $4, and that's a serious argument in you as well. Um, bringing you the good, good quality water in the sun is a good quality one fact in the world. Um, and, but all that system is said to be unaffordable. So if you count its motors, if you put your, all the unaffordable systems with one big bucket, and if they are not affordable collectively, then it's mess. But it does mean someone's going to go without lunch, sure. If you start building one and another and another, they're important. But then all the others that are contributing to the income. And that's 
such changes the way we rate for waters and goodness knows what changes to our accounting system just before such performance. Um, it may be suspicious of what we're trying to actually hide or quantify some and who knows um, what that's actually going to look like um, going forward. Going to ask me, for example, and I'm using that as an example, well, uh, what, so his question, sorry, go with him, I'm using that as an example. What will happen to the 600,000 reserve from depreciation that is fully paid up from a fully paid up scheme? So they've been collecting those rates for over 33 years. Well, since we started doing it, may not be 33 years. Never actually seen the reason upgrade from their systems. It turns out, will it be sustained? So what will happen to that? Will it be simply lost in a, in a consolidated account to benefit of the region? Will the local people from the small Maori community lose their reserves they already have funded? And will this be transparent to the new entity and our rate payers? And that's the other issue. Grants and, and reserves that are specific to, to uh, schemes in the proposal wouldn't affect benefit the entire region. That's the argument that has been used. Likewise, development contribution, for example, will a million dollars of development contribution for a specific scheme reduce the overall capital requirement for the rate payers across the district, thus having a district wide benefit? Then, or will be fully depreciate the scheme's full capital cost, including the development of one million contribution, thus nullifying the positive impact of development contributions on overall affordability, which surely what we are trying to achieve. How can how then can we actually justify the development contribution when we bring it, bring it in? It's going to be rather complex. Finally, the full options and analysis being it hasn't been done. And why wasn't the option, for example, of, of um, worldwide rates included when that had been requested? And secondly, 66% I think the majority have said no, they do not want it. They will like to find support it for that reason, for the sake of the right people. And also, for all the analysis that actually hasn't been done, full quality of work that hasn't done the full impact of costing, I can't see how this can possibly be cheaper in the long run. This is where it's going to be. So I'm going to go. Peer Council of Research, I really think you do that in the cases for speaking rights. Therefore, Thank you, Emma. Well, um, the current motion is to do strip wide target of rates, and wouldn't believe it, but I actually support it. And the reason for that is because um, <laughs> the either government, in my view, um, I think had three waters will move to a more from base model, and I guess it's the lesser. Um, of all the evils, and I think working together collectively with Northland versus working with Northland as well uh, is a much better solution to really working together as a And uh, we don't know if we can end up on the in October, but what I do know, uh, I think we'll um, come to reality as a change in through the space regards of government uh, collective. Uh, in terms of the district wide target rates, I understand that. It will mean in this rate strike an increase to quite clear and quite higher actually in terms of the syringe the rates. However, I also know that the quite clear and quite higher consents are currently being undertaken for their renewals. And as per what counts this factor has raised, uh, the NPS for fresh water uh, highlights that 
every seven percent we need to put in that base disposal. And because we have so many schemes for the one large scheme like Farm Back, we are disadvantaged in terms of having extra people across our consents because of that. And in terms of the actual cost of going through that consenting process, um, as per the financing requirements, that's actually operational costs until we actually get to a decision and decide so that we can capitalize that spread of cost. So in order to be an, enabling all of our schemes to have that opportunity to go through that very expensive consenting process, that is why I'm supporting this day. And I think each scheme's time will come. And I personally think that although Farm Aid feels a bit of disadvantage from going with Clapper and Farm North, I think we work together well as a team. And I think um, in terms of the outcomes, I think there's much better work with us than um, Big Brother Walkland Council. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, next, I have. <laughs> Um, I thought the proposal, the wording of the proposal was confusing, and when you look at the consultation feedback, it's a very clear no. Um, the percentages uh, range from 58% to each to, I think the highest is 95% being in the system. The only one in favour, 100% in favour of the environment. There's something yeah, that's actually worded in between the two tables on page 77. Staff put there, the submitters assume that they will then be charged for both services regardless of if they receive both services online. I think that's the way the motion for um, demonization there, or away from the outcome consultation. Thank you, Council Cockroach. I did want to, to seek assurance because in the bottom, the last paragraph, on page 76, it talks about some returns will experience a net decrease, others will experience a decrease. It would not affect ratepayers who are not, cons not connected to any council wastewater or waste uh, or water scheme. I want to bring it up because of the fact that I know that in the Tahiti and Road area of Hankohe, there were properties there who were not connected to wastewater and yet we were paying full charge service. After investigating, it was found that that uh, piece of information was a desktop rather than an actual check. Well, I need some assurance that not only is it wastewater but also water because the bottom end of Highway Road has their own water service, water supply. And I hate to think that now I believe council water flows down that road. Those that are on their own system aren't going to be serviced for that service charge. <coughs> the second part I want to talk about is on page 79, where it talks about the section, it's subject to section 9, and it talks about the assessment, in particular, state that. Uh, this possible implication of Maori. The council has on occasion to carry out, but it doesn't say is the number of Maori uh, submissions and how they were consulted and what were their uh, arguments for or the needs. So I just ask council that perhaps those areas, if there is going to be a Category there that it talks about why we don't have some specifics because at the moment it just talks about consultation carried out, and I need to stress my needs are the market. Thank you, Councillor Copper. There was a question there around the clarification of that last uh, point there. She puts it here, Smith. Yeah, the point if great players were not connected or not able to get to the council or the can you just get clarification there? Uh, that is correct. I mean, we, um, we're auditing our scheme area of benefits all the time. There's quite a lot of work done last year to correct those um, anomalies that were within the areas of benefit. Um, the revenue and financing policy clearly defines um, the measurement from the pipes that's mm -hmm. deemed to be available. And um, so if you if you're not able to connect, then you wouldn't be charged. Okay. 
And in terms of the other point raised, I think it was just like raising a point there. And I can see got senior leadership team members who are not in the heads that there has been received. Next one, I've got Councillor Fiskovich. Thank you. Hi. All right, then, um, I'll go back to Councillor Hakia Haramina. Hi, kia ora tātou. Um, I think um, this would be a great motion if everybody had um, equitable service. Um, and me rongo au ki ngā whakautu o ngā tāngata i whaka ki pepa, and i mea mai te nui ngā kahore, nō reira, ko tērā taku pōti hoki. Kia ora. Oh, okay. Just, um, um, this would be a great motion if everybody was in an um, equitable um, state, um, but it, but there's so much inequity uh, amongst our region, and I plainly heard from all the feedback a lot of, um, you know, distress, uh, not only about the rates, but also about people felt a whole lot of things were unfairly targeted on them. So I'm going to listen to the feedback that um, of the majority who are opposed to uh, district-wide targeted rates. Kia ora. Sewage and fresh drinking. What can you name any other place in the Kato that is very similar to those areas? <coughs> and what if I look, uh, um, can you let the shark just confirm that the implications for those drinking communities going on from Councillor Kappa to who raised those peri urban areas could potentially get caught in the we've got. Uh, private schemes or um, EV hapu based schemes, make sure that they're not implications. We're not going to So, go on with that. So, the child can confirm there are no implications for those families at all? Not from this decision. Not from this decision, because yeah. they're not connected to, to council supply. No. I'm sorry. I'm not, I just made a statement. Other questions, other people just briefly got asked, or mine was. Politics Councillor Wilson, could you reiterate your question very quickly? We gave the example of Coco, they have signaled the Bowling Reserve thereabouts, and they have pulled it down and said, which is paid on the fully paid, appreciate on the fully paid upstairs. What is going to happen to that appreciation? Responsibility for appreciation? And this, and this change. And then I can get my other question of Rico after the post there. Um, I, I don't want to get into detailed accounting conversations, but um, any reserves that are allocated, to this, the, the way we account for the scheme couldn't change. Um, so if the depreciations on supply to code and paper, they would be used against that, well, that particular scheme, and we would amalgamate all of the costs after that into a district-wide calculation. So it's not as though we're not going to change our systems, we're not going to look at, look at everything into one big bucket in the accounting systems, 
we will retain the granularity, but we will treat it as one calculation for both. So it's another way to say state money will be spent just on re re reiterating, will be spent on that scheme for any capital works, and then anything more. So that will be reducing the total cost that everybody is having to pay for that scheme, which is that. Yeah. The yeah. council will do such understanding orders as you've yeah. already spoken. I'm just yeah. not really. I'm, I'm just for yeah. sure. And yeah. the other question, I can't share that with you, the other question in that one is the example of the model contribution which say a million dollars was contributed how is that going to be worked out across the scheme it would be the That's same as depreciation from this interview from the source of the location so if we were spending five million dollars on the government in depreciate in, in development contributions then we would presumably borrow the remaining four and the implications from that four would get sucked into the district-wide rate so the million would be for that particular scheme and we just talk about the cycle up to this bit like that. The same as it used to do before 2012. Okay, so for those who are thinking of voting this down, can I just turn your bring your attention to the fact that the majority of people that um, submitted in opposition to district-wide rating thought we were referring to every single property in yeah. our district mm -hmm. going to be rated for wastewater and drinking yeah. water, or that we were asking them about the government-led three waters reform. So if you, if you just you know read the analysis that um, has been put together, it shows you the, the ones that actually asked us, you know, got what we were asking. Um, their view is the one that I've given um, high consideration to, and we did explain that to some of them that submitted, um, came and spoke to us online. Um, and also, you know, the, the plants that um, were in the hearing, the the wastewater treatment plant and the Kulkuhu wastewater treatment plant, we don't know what the figures are for their upgrades. We we know that they're non compliant. We know um, it, I know how much a new wastewater treatment plant costs. Mm. And that's not six hundred K. It's it's way more than that. It's in the millions of dollars. And, but we don't know where that will where that will land. And I think you're missing an opportunity for Kobe Kobe if you um, don't support district wide rating today. And you know me, I, I come, you know, I'm always like thinking of the people who have the least um, when I come to the table. Um, and yeah, so that's why I urge urge everyone to um, support district wide rating. Thank you. We put that to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Those opposed, please back to the box. Hurry, very good. And yeah. Hilda's opposed. Sorry, can I have a vote by provision? Deputy Mayor Strickford, President of the Funny Club, Councilor McCoy. Councilor McCoy. Councilor Hapi Akamamita. Against. Councilor Kappa. Councilor McNally. Against. Councilor Pliskovich. Against. Councilor Marich is interested from Councilor Larkina. Aye. Councilor Nusich. Against. What is that? Four. That's five. Which one of us can get it? We have no idea. Five. 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 Five.
Well, you might be fine if I'm going to be <laughs> That's going to happen anyway. Did you want to get more friends? Uh huh. I don't think you should learn from the other teams. I'll go ahead and read it instead. Okay, we're moving to chapter 6.4 new list of names to come to the next team. and that will be through the respective community board and sites as well. Four, five, six, and seven heard by Council of Research, seconded by me, Council of Research, any comments? Why are you happy to take all the reports into the end? There you go, Council of I'm just happy that the properties will be transferred in that way. Further comments? Uh, uh, Councillor Rakina. I know a coach of one, a ten eight, uh, a one or a ten eight, a little to him, a couple of inch, a couple a for one later, and one that gets the farmer or half of one, a kiwi kiwi putana, a little bit of tolerato, a putuana, a putia, a papafitia, a pirato, a totopana, a tena, a mutato farmer, to an ahi. A kamutu, a itapitirohana, a itaparani, a luatari, or motetai on a pitu, a hana and a wahana. Local UV Kerala have been consulted with the support from the Hono, Kahoreo, Kitani, Alans, Mahi, and Nahi, Tatamia, Mema for the Hono, Narata, Rene Mahi, the Hapatuki, Kahoreo, India, Nakaoite, Namahi, Kawanu, Mahapu, and Mahi, Kaoite, Kenaki, Namahi, or Hoi, the Hokiana. The man, you know, in the water, 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 in um, the the Remnants of funding, they're very similar to St. John's, uh, that they give back continuously to the community, and I support them. As I look at page 27, uh, this is a question to all um, uh, in regards to the local iwi and Aotearoa uh, and the project through Te Hono. Um, I am wanting to ask um, who were the people that consulted with the beans um, in order for them to get to this position. 
that was a question of staff just around uh, who gets who our staff are consulted with at the EV Huntsman level. When we say it in a report, it doesn't clarify that. Perhaps something we can take offline, please, and have notable future reports that if we could go um, into what we say to the other one, is there to you know what the other one is there a member on the couple or the from the other one itself? More clarification in the space that's right. And we're appropriate to be able to name who had been spoken to so we get good clarification. Right, um, Councillor Lucent's right of reply. Oh, sorry, um, Dale, yeah, sorry, Dale. No, no, all right. Then we're voting on items 6.4, 5, 6, and 7 that can be approved all of those pieces under the terms that we've been outlined with the new papers. All they can pay to get to the high, those opposed, sections. That is the council approved the license to be issued to the issue the years from the number of any pack up lot through the EP. There are legalities there for a time on the term of the right to the year and the subsequent markets held in charge of the day and in charge of the motion. Thank you, Councillor Foy, seconder. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Shepherd. Let's speak to this motion, Councillor. I know it has been too long. Um, Councillor Foy, seconder. 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 Councillor Foy, Happy to second this. I am, um, from what I understand of the report, it simply is a uh, you know, same person, same deal, and um, it's a her name because she, there's no entity or you know, organisation for that least. Yeah, so I'm happy to support this. Thank you. Council, that's one. Thank you, Mr. Report, and I've found my pages here, so I'll take 290. Um, it's got the, the map. Of the, the party layer, uh, it's actually quite relevant to the title boundary, uh, and it includes this little triangle area here behind the um, old warehouse as well. Um, I just want to highlight that the change of use of the old warehouse, and I've already addressed this with staff, um, that um, we'll look at car parking for the for that use of that building. And the car parking for the town centre actually determines the future uses within the town centre. Can't actually have uses without the associated car parking under the transportation section of the district plan. And the lease for the old warehouse, I think, is seven car parks. Uh, so um, just noting this lease today um, is about a license to occupy uh, with a right of renewal. And you'll see that that actually covers the main car parking area of the whole town centre. Uh, however, we have also done a town uh, revitalization plan with our farm colleagues in the KBA for Potire uh, that looks at the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 year plan for the town centre. And part of that is bringing in a key retail activity, which would require that future car parking for that activity, uh, which is why the car parking for the change of the old warehouse is so key for the future of the town. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight the staff, and I've already highlighted this to Kevin in an email. Um, our team has been provided a site plan of the parking plane, which was formally requested for the building that we own. Um, but I don't know if um, Kevin wanted to comment on it or not, um, but that's the time to stand here. But um, I wanted to highlight that um, the change of use of the old warehouse cannot have that area of um, lease as part of their parking. And the any changes to the parking in the council during the high time needs to come community board and we'll work with them because there's a lot of other parks in the town centre we can allocate for the use of that old leader um, and usage. Thank you, Council, for the work. Uh, there was a question up to the community. Is there anyone who can respond to the community? 
Um, through the chair, I'm not sure I completely understand the piece out of the question, but we did reply to the council for it, and I don't think this is the right forum for um, us to go into the detail of what we need to do with our apartment spaces, but our understanding of the situation is not the same um, as you just heard described. We don't perceive that as a shared structure, um, but I don't wish to uh, delay beyond the members. Um, so we can pursue that offline through the chair and like, listen. Um, point of order, I think what actually for with this item being progressed in South and Eta provides uh, information. And uh, it is pertinent in terms of the car parking for which I've seen this. And we own the building and we should be provided the parking now. And it shouldn't be denied to us. It's a different lease, the building that's going to look amazing. Through the chair, we'd be talking about a 12 month term. Um, with a right of renewal for the use of the car park for market for one day a week, um, rather than as, as the bigger. Now, obviously, as, as things move forward in terms of any change of use applications or changes to the town centre, this will be taken into account. But um, I'm not sure that I see the immediate issue with this one. Um, um. Yes, I mean, this item here came to the community board, which was great. It is a management community board, but no one understands that. And it allowed us to integrate into the PBA and to plan that kind of volumes we've done. So if you ask if there's any parking related to that um, key building um, in the town chief being held, we have come to the community board that we may get and have a pay on so that we can make decisions accordingly in the parking. Through the child, take that under advisement with the upper through the district plan and the district planning to do what can and can't be done in that sense. Thank you, Chair. Um, the ESL board supports us, but you've got to note that this is a yearly lease. Um, and if it's left far too late, it's from the other board. So, in the future, I'd quite like to see something come to our board about October, November, because you know, the, the actual VC might have a change of heart. She might not want to do it next year. And therefore, they have to go out for um, submissions or do some paper release. So, if um, we can have that, that paper early in the, in the actual. Thank you. I can see um, Carla from our legal team is going to contribute. Is it a space thing, Carla? Yes, um, to be always shown to me. I mean, if you've read the license structure, this is a license. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, and LCOs, like, are temporary legal documents. Um, and with our licenses, they are the same as our license agreements. Um, and so we have to go through the process of going 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 through the process of and we can negotiate with the license and guard. But my understanding of the things, Kevin, is that the area that you're talking about in regards to the parking of the building is not incorporated in the what we're using for the kind of cat. But um, yeah, so that's what it is. It's a temporary legal mechanism to have the market to change um, the government of any time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I, I just want to raise that while I personally did not have any issues in dealing with Shirley Williams, I always get a little bit nervous seeing that something like this is just on one person, mm -hmm. not in, uh, under the custodianship of an organisation or an entity or a committee to oversee this. And um, I would I get nervous that should there be any personality conflicts within the community while I haven't heard of any, but if, uh, if, if this is just with one person, it just makes me a little bit nervous just to know potentially the community to consider in the future, but I don't think it should preclude us from putting this in the line right now. I'm happy to put this to a vote for the complaint to say I don't as opposed to extension to the motion is very and I believe that similar to other items of the day, we will be going to the House of Court for the 
Thank you, Councillor Paul. I believe we ask for it to be our staff to be there so they can share that ultimate with us. Um, Councillor Paul, you are uh, moving the council indicate to be start to go with the trust that's conditional approval. Uh, that's moved by Councillor Paul, now to by Councillor Pliskovic. Indicate to be start to go with the trust that's conditional approval to invest with the purchase of 200 shares in the community of authority, the money is in the reservoir, it's appropriate. What are the main infrastructure? Subject to council being able to obtain the necessary improvements from the purchase by the DIA. <laughs> and which is fine with multiple money there. But in the meanwhile, what you are intending to do with this amendment, Council Paul, is to um, initiate, is to go to conditional approval to purchase the share to the hotel and then. Um, what conditions and approvals needed in that space? I'll pass the floor over to you to speak to you. Thank you, Your Worship. I struggled with this one, to be honest, um, because I think about a lot of money, and it's not really what's an agreement I believe got the fund council, regional economic development, specifically a company going on at the Wilson Regional Council level. I think it's confused me in that the item talked to the Kitty Kitty Water Source. I want to remove the Kitty Kitty Water Source from the conversation. We have the Jacobs report. The Jacobs report about this provide a number of potential solutions which might mean groundwater, river, or head of the two lakes. And you told the work that's been seen in another case around that we don't know what's the best viable long term solution for Kitty Kitty. So I took that out of my opinion and I looked at this purely <laughs> And when I read the report, it makes a very compelling case how we could be able to transform a part of our district and see the economic opportunities that are very creative and have been gone. To give you some context, when I moved to Kikiri, it was just after the lakes were created. They were created by the Ministry of Youth. And I live next to one of those lakes. Kiri Kiri was a tiny little town, population 1,000. You could shoot a bow and arrow to the middle of the town and you wouldn't fit anywhere. Now it's home to about 20,000 people. All of that is built on in the chart. And I think this has the ability <coughs> to change a large sector of our district should the landowners I have a big concern in regard to our ability to fund this in the 25-26 year. And I go back to the report at the start of the agenda where the staff say the quantified limit is that the rates increase should not exceed local government cost of these plus 3.5%. This limit, according to our financial strategy, will be exceeded in the year 25-26 at 11.11%, 11 .11%, which is well over the recommended threshold of 6.90%, which gives me some concern about our ability to fund the $7.5 million. I've taken some comfort from our Chief Financial Officer, who tells me that we are applying for new credit rating, in the interim before we reach there, and also in conversations with the trust and our chief financial officer. I understand that there's a high degree of probability that we can expect what to do will be picked up by the new regional entity, but that's speculation at this point, that's not what's been done. But in essence, the reason that I've moved that amendment is that when I read the business case again, we're talking about ultimately over one billion dollars of economic returns. We're talking about 590 FTEs. leads. We're talking about 600 million dollars of media investment in self-payment plan. Large swathes of land, 
currently under under. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's too good an opportunity for us to turn down at this point in time. Uh, if we would speak to these areas and walk through a long way, I don't have to get something even more work with you there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for that. And Councillor Klistovich. Uh, if you just bear in mind, we sovereignty the ability of the North to uh, be the peak drafting of the North Island, the section the Council of Boys creates 1,010 jobs, mm. and 520 entities on top of the direct board of 490. <laughs> the, the money from the central government is ready. This is shovel ready. I uh, suppose that this council approves the, the purchase of the 200 shares to set up now and get those. Other council of the Yeah, I also have on the date of the course, and I refer to a number of options. One on page three of the report says the new visible dam is one of the options. New source does not currently exist, not being identified or presented. They go on to say, although technically possible, the future dam would most likely be difficult to implement due to wind ownership and consenting challenges. It is also probably Kerry. Kerry Reservation dams are located in most obvious locations for the dam, so there could be a scope for development. And on that alone, um, you have to support this. They also mentioned boards in there, and given me um, our experience with boards, one for a couple of weeks, I wouldn't back a board. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor McNally. I've got three speakers for all of us to do any speakers against the proposed motion. No, no. Then I have a question, Charlie. I have a question. And you are happy to take questions, Councillor Lucic? Yeah, just the first one I know that it was a request by Paul uh, for that money. Is this going to cause any delays? I just want to ensure you know, that this is not going to cause any delays and allow them to do have something concrete enough to proceed because it hasn't been uh, so well, said by others that it's an opportunity we can't use, we can't, we can't refuse. And, um, and also, I think we have on the council of managements, I think character is at risk for the future and actually had that option as well. So, yeah. Therefore, this would allow them to proceed with not specifically. It's got some conditions in there, and that's what's concerning me. That still provide the um, conditions that case they can proceed. My understanding, Councillor Research from conversations, and since I took it over the trust, is that this conditional but definitely all about the proceeding to get um, forward here. Thank you. We'll put uh, sorry, Councillor Paul Lewis, right over the We'll put that to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. I suppose the chance the motion is carried. Now, um, I need to move that we will sit for longer than six hours. We are reaching our uh, breach time for the standing orders 4.2, but I will go to a break. I'll just move that before we go to the break. That we will continue on past our introduction. Thank you, Council of Research. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions, that's carried. We are cutting this. We can, can we uh, pause our motion, please? We're going to go to a five minute um, break. Right in here. Um,
Thank you for being Now, there are a number of items we are actually going to leave just in the interest of time. We can uh, just move to continue on past our uh, standing orders time allocation. But we're going to go into property exclusion now to just those items. I'm moving to the public be excluded from the following parts of the proceedings of this meeting. Um, it is for like taking it down to the meeting for five, six, and seven. And after the council of other community board of chairs, uh, Governor Rankin and Ward to remain in the public exclusion part of this meeting. The reason why we are going to public exclusion is under the grounds of section here in the local government and exit on page seven. I'm moving. Thank you, Councillor Lucy. You can see all those in favor. Aye. 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 Research, would you like to speak to this item? Yeah. This is something that was discussed with Father Collins and our governance, the governance workshop with them. Yeah, I thought I was going to turn to the point of view, but that's all right. Um, I'm going to be pretty straightforward. The same has been made in the boring view. Um, and why not? <laughs> Thank you, Council Point. Not just uh, Town Point was exceeding the um well tormes.
predicted. Can you hear us, Joshna? Thank you. We, we have come to the conclusion of our meeting. We um, will be releasing some of the information on the items that we considered public exclusion with um, numbers, contractual numbers predicted. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's been an incredibly long day. But um, if we could just finish on a highlight, just um, really looking forward to seeing the progress that RTB can now make in making Kitty a bilingual town. It's a really beautiful way to start our meeting. Um, it's also King's birthday weekend this weekend, so we know that we um, can expect to get tens of thousands of visitors up into the north over this weekend. So just uh, um, please encourage our whanau and community to drive safe on our roads. They are in terrible conditions. Um, to take it easy and to, of course, um, continue to offer that famous north of Manakitanga that we are so well known with. I'll close this off with a cut here. Uh, release the bump below the dip without and have a really good day.